Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and welcome to my Beginner's Guide intro game. So um, basically how Games Workshop introduce people to Blood Bowl and well all of their games is by having an intro game in the store. And I'm going to do that with the help of my friend who agrees with me, Fashbinder. Hello. Here. He's he's only on voice, unfortunately. You don't get to see his beautiful face, but you do get to listen to his beautiful voice. And um, right, basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to take you through a game, explain all of the moves we're making, why we're making them, and stuff. Because Blood Bowl is a really hard game to to get decent at. Even to be honest, everyone starts off pretty terrible um, as a rule, and uh, there's a lot to pick up. So we're going to try and show as much of that as we can. We're using the quick start teams from the Blood Bowl 2016 box set because, you know, this is kind of applicable to both then. Um, we've got two blitzers, two throwers, two catchers, six linemen, four rerolls. It's it's a terrible team. You would never start a team like this properly, but that's what you get in the box with the models. Um, the only difference is on Blood Bowl 2, the catchers are armor 8 and 70k, whereas in the box set they are armor 7 and 60k. So um, and four rerolls, and then Fashbinder's team here, keeping the ball safe. Oh, he's he's named his guys. He's a good boy. Um, he's got two black orcs, two blitzers, two throwers, six linemen, and three rerolls. So that that is exactly the same as the box set. So um, so the team should be familiar to you if you have the box. Ah. <sighs> Do you want to start it up, Fashbinder? All righty. That was a good intro. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, some, some of it is really basic and, like, stuff you should really just read the rules for, um, such as setting up the board. <laughs> I don't think we need to cover that. Um, the kickoff, you pretty much, well... I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard. It's a hard thing to go into, isn't it? Because you don't know how basic to go. But basically, players take it in turns. Turn-based game, isn't it? And um, you try to score touchdowns to win. That's that's it, basically, isn't it? Indeed. You did mention, however, that this was a bad starting team. Do you have a link to a resource that you can put in the description below the YouTube video? I do, in to, fact. To uh, give people a, a good idea of what they should be doing? I do, in fact. Thank you very much, Flashbinder. Yes, I will link my Orc and Human guides in the in maybes with um, those things that pop up on screen or in the description and um, so watch out for that there will definitely be there'll be a bunch of links I'll link the art of blocking PDF that's really good explains the odds of blocking and stuff um, right, I'll receive so the first the first decision you make actually in the game is whether to kick off or receive if you want to win um, kicking is usually a good idea um, if you're really pushing for the win, if you're happy with a the draw, then usually receiving is the safer option. I would say receiving is the safe option, and kicking is the like riskier option to go for a win, push for a win. Um, if you're playing on Blood Bowl 2, the computer game, the first thing you need to do is press Control a couple of times. A lot of people have asked me about this. You press Control a couple of times, you get to see the skills above the heads of the people with skills which is obviously great if you're, if you're new to it. It's obvious who the throwers are here. It's obvious who the blitzers are here. The black orcs are a bit bigger, so you should be able to tell that. And the same with the humans. Obvious the blitzers. Throwers are obvious, and the catchers are obvious. Even, even though, well, it might be ob not obvious which position they are, but if you hover over, you can, you can read the skills. So then it's, it becomes obvious. Um, so Fashbinder is set up here in the standard ziggurat defense. As it's known, he's got his strength guys on the outside by the looks of it. Some people put them on the inside, some put them on the outside. Some put them on the actual far outside so you can't break through. Um, have you got any any thoughts to share about that setup, Fashbinder? You're quite right. In fact, uh, Spartaco was uh, really diligent in having his Black Orcs on the flanks, ensuring that no one blitz through a blitzer on the sideline and sneak through. But I think it's safe to say that looking to make safe plays, you won't be doing anything crazy like that. And so uh, assessing the match, you know, whether you're in a, a knockout league or a virtual league, uh, there'll be different strategies for different times. And so in this instance, I think you'll be just making your safe blocks on the line and won't be pushing through like a crazy person turn one. Yeah. So that's yeah. my rationale for, for the setup. Keeps the AV8 uh, throwers safe. They're the real weakness of the orc team. Yeah. And so the only blocks available are on AV9. And uh, if you do go for the sideline play, there's the potential for a counter serve. Yeah, 
Yeah, and there's obviously only three guys on the line of scrimmage. You almost always only want to put three guys on the line of scrimmage on defense because they're just getting out blocked. There's certainly, if he had four Black Orcs, there would have been an argument for, say, putting all four Black Orcs on the front line um, and then just hoping to dominate the LOS that way. There's an argument for it. But, um, Absolutely. If I had, if I had four, I probably would have and stuck the uh, the linemen in the center a little further up just to deny the assists on them. Yeah, as yeah. Uh, as demonstrated there. Yeah, yeah. But th but this this here is a standard one, as he says. Is is two is two players are come fully protected. His armor eight weak links are fully protected there. These are half protected if they were developed teams, so that that's okay. But really, you, you get to fully protect two players with this setup. Right, so I'm going to put my two block guys on the line. Block is obviously the, where the reliable blocks come from because the block skill is very useful. Um, right, I guess I'll start both catches, eh, just for the sake of it. So when you set up, you've got to think about if your opponent gets a blitz. That's basically the biggest thing you're thinking about when you're setting up is what happens if my opponent on the kickoff table um, rolls a blitz or a perfect defense. Against orcs, there's not much you can do if they get a perfect defense. Um, to, it, it's humans because they outstrength you, and they're just going to make it really hard. There's pretty much nothing you can do against a perfect defense. You can make it. Most teams can set up in a way that at least minimizes the impact of a blitz, but sometimes a blitz is going to be horrible, whatever you do. Um, well, a, a decent amount of the time, a blitz is going to be horrible, whatever you do. Right, so um, I'll confirm that. And when you're kicking, you always kick off in the dead center because it can scatter up to six squares. Unless you've got the kick skill, it's it's pretty crazy to not kick directly in the center, in my opinion. I agree, just not worth the risk, especially against uh, edgy three teams who fail to pick up in a one and nine. Yep. So so here we are, right? So there's there's turns. I go, then Fashbinder goes. That that's how turns work. Actions. There's different actions you can take. You can make a block action, where if you're starting next to somebody, you can punch them. You can make a move action, where you move a number of squares equal to their MA, and maybe GFIs, go for it, GFIs for short. Um, and then blitzes. What do you, you need to do to make a GFI? Roll a two plus. I don't want to right. get too much in, because I've only got four minutes, so I don't want to go too much <laughs> okay. into detail in the movements. Um, the biggest thing about Blood Bowl, this is what makes it exciting. Every turn exciting, and every game exciting. Every, every turn of every game exciting is the turnover rule. Every time you fail something, your turn ends. That is crucial. That is, the, that is basically the crux of Blood Bowl, is the turnover rule. And the reroll mechanic lets you... So basically, every time you fail something, almost always when you fail something, it's the end of your turn. Um, and, but you can all, often use rerolls to, um, to change the outcome. But you can only reroll something once. Um, right. So, tackle zones. Oh, yeah, another big part of movement is tackle zones. If I click on my player, I can see the tackle zones of my opponents here. Each player has a tackle zone around him of um, eight squares. I can't, I can't do it here. <laughs> eight squares around him, and then basically that's his zone of control. Right, so I'll, I'll do my turn before we get too crazy into it. Right, so my blitzers are going to block. So, when you block... There's a 1 in 3 chance, well, there's a 1 in 6 chance of a skull, which is attacker down, and a 1 in 6 chance of both players going down. Block saves you from both down. So by having the block skill, a 1 dice block, you would fail 1 in 6, a 2 dice block, you fail 1 in 36. Without the block, a 1 dice block, you fail 1 in 3, a 2 dice block, you fail 1 in 9. So the difference between 1 in 36 and 1 in 9 is obviously massive, and then if you use a reroll, it becomes only in 12, 9, 6 to fail with block, or a 1 in 81 to fail without block. So block blocks are the first moves you make. What you could do is, as the name of my team implies, safe actions first, I could move a player to where the ball is. But my plan is to pick it up and move back, so I don't really need to do that yet. I'd rather have my players forward if I, if I fail here, to be honest. And we get another knockdown, so that's defended down unless he's got dodge. Orcs don't have dodge. Now, now it's a little bit more risky. Now I've got to think, do I make this block before I go for the pickup? Um, and I think I will re-roll it because I've got four re-rolls. Normally you've got to think about managing your re-rolls. Like, if you fail, will you re-roll it? Um, and often you, you're not going to re-roll things that fail 
You're not, you don't want to re-roll everything that fails. Well, okay, you'd like to re be able to re-roll everything that fails. But often you can't afford to. So I've moved these guys in a screen here, as you can see. They've got their tackle zones all around, making it hard for the Orcs to run through the middle there. These have got tackle zones here, making it hard for the Orcs to run through. So I think it's fine to go for the pickup now. So this is a 1 in 9 chance of failing. It's 67%. It's a 3+, plus because he's agility 3. Um, so agility 3 would need a 4+. plus. He gets a plus 1 um, for making a pickup roll. So he picks that up. I think it's worth picking up and moving forward a little bit. And he makes the pickup because sure hands gives him a re-roll to the pickup. And we will get these two guys down now. I could have moved them first, but I did think it was better to have them up there um, beforehand. Now, it's a little bit dodgy, this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy here first to screen and blitz with this chap. He's going to try and hit and run. So this is my blitz. So, so basically, your most important action each turn is your blitz action because that, you know, that dictates where... I don't know, your opponent wants to dictate where your blitz is. You want your blitz to be effective. He wants your blitz to be ineffective. Um, so that's a really important where your blitz action takes place every turn. So I hit and run there. The reason I hit from this angle was I can choose these three squares to push him. Um, if I had knocked him over, I would have pushed him in this square. So he was based by one of my players. So he, he, st he would start in a tackle zone. But because I only push him, um, I leave him free so he doesn't get to hit my guy. A big part of Blood Bowl is making sure you don't give up blocks. You maximize the blocks you take. You, sorry, you, no, that's stupid. You maximize the blocks you make and minimize the blocks you take. And that is true even for Armour 9 teams like Black, like Orcs, um, but especially so for Armour 8 teams like Humans. That's a good four minute turn. Probably the first four minute turn I've ever had in Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> Over to you, Fash. You know, look at it, the, the defense was very well, uh, very good. Well, I, for one, however, would have moved the catcher and the thrower in its position to strain off that area beforehand. The rationale for that is that the movement six blitzer on the flank couldn't have reached it if the ball uh, pickup failed. And so in the interest of safe moves first, uh, that's what I would have done. Doesn't really matter, not, not wrong, uh, but protecting the ball uh, is a good habit to get into when picking it up. Absolutely yes. Maybe I should have done that, especially for the new players. But I, I did want that. I did want them further forward in case you know if things are going wrong. If you were to pressure that, that that was my rationale. But anyway, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Carry on. <laughs> uh, as as for my turn, I've got three linemen on the ground. If I just stand them up, they're going to be taking blocks. Uh, I do have the two four strength black orcs that maybe could put a little pressure on. But as Jimmy just mentioned. Uh, you want to minimize the amount of blocks that you're taking as any team. And so I have a bit of a dilemma here that I need the linemen to stand up. I don't really want to be dodging them out. I could try to clear them. But in this instance, as they're so, so thoroughly tied up, I think a little bit of aggression here early on the line while keeping men back, just in case there is a uh, running play with a catcher, might be the way to go. Mm. The safe place first will be uh, standing up the guys that I'm committed to standing up. I think then, as Jimmy's safe blocks come from his blitzers, if I can have a Black Orc uh, facing some blitzers in a manner that prevents him from making two dice blocks, that would be really desirable. And so I think there may be a, a blitz from, from a blitzer might be able to have my turn end in a manner that isn't giving Jim nice two die blocks immediately. Yeah. Because, oh yeah, so this is a thing, while your aim is to score touchdowns, basically, the, the way the turns work, oh, Block doing some great work there. If that hadn't been a blitzer, he would have, he would have had to either turn over or use a reroll, but instead he gets the knockdown. It's pretty good, pretty good skill as Block. Sorry, I'll let, I'll let you do your turn anyway, and then I'll do my... No, my no, that's all right, uh, inter interject any time. The, the other blitzer is in fact called a Block. <laughs> Blocking with block is absolutely what you should be doing almost every single turn, uh, especially for your blitz. Yeah. Had it not been a block fella, it would have burned very wrong. Yeah. So so yeah, so a lot of people like want to score, but you've uh, being good at blood bowl um, or competent maybe at blood bowl is all about 
it's about the controlling the drive and controlling when you score. You, you generally want to score as late as possible with any team. Um, elves can sometimes score early and try and get another one if you know you're outclassing your opponent. Um, but, you, you know, mostly you want to be trying to stall that clock down and score late in the half as possible. Ideally, turn eight is when you score. A lot of people talk about the 2-1 grind, where basically you, you attempt to force your opponent to score early or turn him over in an ideal situation. But obviously, if, if you can just shepherd your opponent down, let them score early, that gives you plenty of turns to score back and then and then on your own drive you stall out for eight turns. That is the, that is the standard strategy for basically all teams actually in Blood Bowl. But especially Bash. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, especially yeah, Movement 3. Uh, sorry, uh, Agi 3, you know, medium movement teams, absolutely. What, what they call Bash teams. Yeah. It's the general strategy for Bash teams. Yeah. Uh, so with the three linemen trapped in the center and not wanting to give... You know what we call free blocks. A free block is uh, an immediate block that someone makes with very little effort or movement. If you're going to be giving blocks, make someone commit a large amount of their team to be doing it. Uh, that's what I think. Yep, and absolutely. so, on the left hand side of the field, the Black Orc uh, could get you know two assists for the number 11 lineman to get a block. Uh, so, a little bit of risk there, but it's a two man assist that puts people on the sideline. The three men uh, on the LOS that were blocked down previously uh, are now somewhat protected. And uh, the right flank, similarly, with the, or well, my my right flank, your left flank, from your perspective, yeah. uh, the number nine lineman's preventing the assist on the number four blitzer, and so I've made it as difficult as I can for Jim to get easy two die blocks yeah. without committing a lot of men. Yeah, and 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 that's going to win him the game, you know. Like people say, oh, you've got to, you know, you don't want somebody to break down the sideline. But let's say I do break down the sideline and go here. He can just block his players free and, and, and knock me over, you know. That's this is not a winning strategy to just bez forward as fast as you can. You've what what would be the play ball. to get that catcher? So it would be the eleven lineman on the center locks That's down it. your lineman and frees the thrower and the blitzer. Yeah. 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 Or this guy would put push him. Um well <laughs> this this player could push him here. And then if he only gets a push, he could push him and stuff. But there'd, there'd be lots of ways he could push him, get three dice. There's, there's loads of ways. There's so too many ways to count that this guy could just get taken down if he if he run away. So run, running away is not an, is making break breakaway plays. It's your last it's your last ditch effort. So what do we want to do here? I I think I want to knock this guy down, then this guy down, then this guy down, then maybe. I can't because can't of these two guys. Could do a one dice at him. So this, so this is going to be a bit of a bit of a horrible turn for me. So the first thing that was what about, I was trying to do. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, so right, let's stand this guy up first because although he's just going to get knocked down, I do want players standing up to do stuff. <laughs> right. So blitzing. So I, th I think I'm committed to making this blitz here on him with my thrower. So obviously it's a it's a blockless block which is a bit risky. I do so when you make a block you both compare this you compare the strengths of both players. My throw is strength three, his blitz is strength three. But when I hit from here, because there is a player from my my team in his tackle zones, he can assist, giving me plus one strength as it says, and making it two dice my pick. So I will do this blitz here. Really not ideal, but works out. And I, I choose not to p re follow. And why is that? I don't know. <laughs> it's so you can get the assist on the black orc. Um, no, I, t I, no I, t I tell you why I choose. No, because I could have. I could have got the assist if I did follow. The reason is, if I get a push on this black orc, I don't want him to be basing my players, giving giving Fashbinder more blocks. So now I move this guy in here. And now when I hit the black orc, I've got two guys. So I'm strength three, four, five. He's strength four. This guy would like to help him, but he can't because he's in one of my tackle zones. So this guy can't assist, make a defensive assist. This guy would also like to assist my block, but he can't because he's in tackle zones. So that's that's how tackle zones work for blocks. Hopefully you get that. See, now I've got the push. So now the not following looks like a good idea because two player, these two are already in the tackle zones of these guys. Yeah. And because this guy is in the tackle zone of this guy, he can't assist this block here, so it's another two dice here. 
and I can take the both down because I have block and he doesn't. Um, but it's still, it's still very dodgy, isn't it, this for me? I could put a player in here. One dice block him, and if I pow, I can then two dice him and save him. But the ball's coming under a little bit of pressure at this point. But I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. I think I'll move this guy in. I didn't actually need to move him in yet, so maybe I should have done the one dice block first. But I've moved him now. <laughs> no take backs. <laughs> no take backs. This guy, one, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. So he could potentially get to there, but it's unlikely. Um, these guys could run through if, if things went wrong. So I think we're just going to drop back with the throw a little bit. So he's he's completely safe. No matter what happens, the throw is come, the ball is safe at this point. And here we are, going to go a bit dodgy here and make a one dice block. So. Yeah, okay, I'm running out of time. <laughs> I get the ball down, I'll keep that. And the danger with keeping it is my armor 8 guy gets knocked off the pitch and his armor 9 guy is still on the pitch. Over to you, Fash. Now, look, it was a great turn. Got some uh, good blocks pointing out uh, when not to follow, considering that a push is, uh, you know, uh, the most likely result on a, well, arguably the most likely result on a block in that there's two instances of it on a D6. Yeah. Uh, so no, that, that was very good. And uh, risk mitigating, keeping the thrower in the backfield prevents me from even realistically pretending to get there. Uh, so, however, I have now, rather than just standing up the three linemen like I've been, uh, had I not made base contact, because I did make some base contact, base contact and did it in a reasonable manner, I now have two die blocks, and as you can see, the AV8 humans are very susceptible to it. Yeah, yeah. This is at the point where strength is is quite important. Um, the, the the two the two strength four black orcs did work quite relevant, weren't they, in in making this favourable? They're amazing. <laughs> yeah. There is the uh, potential surfing play as well on the number eleven lineman. And I think I might even attempt it. Yeah. But I would like to make safe plays first. I'll tell you what, most of my blocks are going to be without block. I think the Blitzer will be the one that Blitzes for the surf. So I think my first, what you would call safe play, is a, in fact a block without block. So that's a bit yeah. uh, a yeah. bit scary. So, so yeah, the surf. So this is the thing. If you have a player near the sidelines and they are pushed and n none of the push squares would keep them on the pitch, they are pushed into the crowd. And as you can see, this guy, you may not see it straight away, but Fashbinder has seen it straight away. He is in danger from the, this lineman pushing him to here, then this black orc pushing him to here, and then this blitzer coming around and, and pushing in the crowd, which is a surf. Holy smokes. My <laughs> surf might be off the table. It may well be off the table now, because it is a somewhat risky making two blockless blocks to do it, and giving up a safe block to do it too. So I mean that, it that might was, be a better final action. Yeah. So that, that was a one in that was a one in thirty six failure rolling a double skull. However, it was actually only a one in nine failure state due to him not having block. And Fashbinder did use his one reroll for the turn. So this makes the rest of the turn a lot riskier for him. So that's something you have to do sometimes is change your um, plans when you use an early reroll when you weren't expecting to use an early having to use to re early reroll. <laughs> thought wow. about using a, a block with block next, knowing that the, my next result could be a 1 and 9, a burnt down skull combination. Unbelievable, Jeff. And, it, and his reward and with the KO. Making blocks with block. That's Blood Bowl 101. It really is, yeah. Make it, basically, you're not going to go far wrong if you just make as many two dice blocks as you can with, as much, with block as much as you can. <laughs> So Fashbinder would have would have kind of liked to have rolled a push there to get the to get the crowd surf. If he had rolled a push, he would have pushed into here, so that this guy could have gone one, two, three, four, five, GFI to hit him in the crowd. Hmm. 
But no, that's that's the summary of the turn, really. Uh, keep the blitzes tied up. They're the blocks with block, and we just saw how important blocks with block are. Having a uh, blitzer backfield just in case a, a catcher tries to do something sneaky. And because the catcher is the biggest threat for this matchup, I think, in that uh, their eight movement is really hard for a orc team to catch. In that the uh, fastest orc fella is a six move blitzer. Uh, always ensuring that I've got the capacity to stop a catcher that runs through, I think, is uh, a good idea. Yep. Oh, got a pal. Tells me dodger. So there you go. Because because catchers have dodge, I was hoping to demonstrate the fact that they've got dodge saving them. But unfortunately, um, you know, only one in six results actually results in them getting knocked up, clean knocked over, um, which is like what people call a pow, defended down. Um, because he was hitting without block, um, that was the only... It was only, a low percentage play. Yeah, it was, a, it was about 30% to knock me over there because only one result on the dice was going to knock me down, but he did have two dice of it. So what I think I want to do here is blitz this chap, because then that will give me, if I even if I push him, I'll be able to assist here to make a 2D here, then a 1D here, and then a 1D here or something. This is, this is I mean, this is really going badly, but... It is two removals by turn three is incredible for, for the Orc team. Yeah. Yeah, there's, normally you wouldn't, and of course you want, and basically, so I, I went eight squares there. It is possible to go extra ones. I wouldn't have gained anything by going here. But even if I did, you would have to weigh up if it's worth using a go for it, because that is a, you roll a dice and on a one, you fail, and, and that is very risky. But let's go for the blitz here. Um, do I want to stand this guy up? Yes, I do. And do I want to stand this guy up and put him in contact? And do you know what I think I do? Because my plan is to two dice this guy, two dice this guy, one dice this guy, two dice this guy, but I need I need some this guy and um, these people occupied. If I go here if I go here I get to occupy more players, but it means I'm getting hit on three dice. Which is gonna be maybe horrific. I'll wait on him. I'll wait and see what happens over here first. Because I don't really want him to get punched. So I'll use my blitz, get the knockdown, because if it was a push he would have gone here, um, and the reason for him to go there is so that he couldn't block him next turn if he'd gone here. If I pushed him to here, if it, it's hard, I'm, I'm struggling to speak, <laughs> right. if I had pushed him to here he gets to block this guy, if I push him to here he's free to act but he's not exerting influence on the game, on my players. If I push him to here then I couldn't assist the or the, um, this block here. So that's why I was going to push him to here if it was a push. Because it's a pow, I keep him in a tackle zone so that he's kind of locked down. It, it I mean, it is a 3 plus from the dodge out, but that's so risky that basically starting your turn in a tackle zone keeps you locked down at low team value with agility 3 teams. Um... I think I am going to stand this guy up. I think I have to. Because I can think I can move forward here a bit as well. Because I think I have to move forward a bit because this, this flank has obviously completely collapsed. Um, so I've got to be wary of this chap. So let's move him here. Out of range of him. Forward a little bit. So the same kind of idea with this guy. Going to make a two dice with without block. If I'd got a push, he would have gone here or here. But because I get the pow, I can keep him under control. And now, it's the one dice. Is do I make a two dice here, a one dice here, then I can make a two dice here. So that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully this doesn't go wrong. And I mean, that's a success, really. It's not ideal, but at least it doesn't end my turn. And now that means this, this guy can two dice block with block against his weakest player. Um, although he's the same as all of mine, he is the weak link for the Orcs. And now there's this lineman. I've got two options. I can, I can leave him lying down, or I can make a four plus three plus dodge out. The advantage of the four plus three plus dodge out is that he will actually do something relevant if he gets there. So normally I think I would leave him lying down, and then instead of the flashbinder, I commit somebody, probably a lineman, to keep him pinned against the sideline. Um, if I stand him up, I'm just going to get kicked in the crowd. 
no questions asked. So so standing him up is not an option. That's why I didn't do him earlier, even though it's like a safe action if you like. It wasn't an option to stand him up. Um, I think I'm not going to re-roll these, but it would be nice to have him here. And of course we fail. Well, that's okay. Right, so uh, definitely weak on my right flank. Uh, we'll need to commit men to fix that up. Fortunately, the three dice on the catcher, three dice to uh, get the power is pretty good. Yeah. Dodging works. Uh, so first, look, the, the throw is not going to do anything. We'll we'll stand him up. Yeah. Sorry, I just I should go back and as Glaive Master just said in chat, I explain how dodging works. So. You, you look at the agility of the player, which in this case is three, which gives you a base roll. You make you take, subtract their agility from seven, and that gives you the base target roll, um, which is a four plus. You get a plus one for making a dodge roll, which makes it a three plus. Because I was dodging into his tackle zone, that's that's how tackle zones work. Oh, yeah, this was really bad. This is really bad. So, um, yeah, the way tackle zones work is they apply a modifier to the, ta to the dodgers, and most things but dodges particularly it's when you dodge into the tackle zone so if this catcher here was based by these three and dodged away to here he would dodge in a three plus but if he was to dodge into them along the line he would he would have to roll a six plus um yeah i should have i should i'll do that i'll do that before before the game <laughs> Because that was that was really quite important. So he survived two three dice blocks because the blockers didn't have block. <laughs> what a champion! <laughs> yeah. I, do you know what? When we did when we did the try run, I explained all about dodging into tackle zones and stuff. As the first thing I did, and then it is it is tough to get everything out. You know, I guess things will be some things will be explained later than they should have be should have been. It's the most resilient catch you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So now the reason he's get, he was getting three dice was because he's got a strength three guy with two assists against a strength two. When he hits him again, he'll be strength four with an assist. So basically that makes him strength five, which is more than double the strength two, which means it's three dice he gets to pick. Yeah, that is and true. This time it'll be the power. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Sorry, the rationale for the turn was to fix up my right flank, just have a little more men uh, relevant for these uh, scary catches. So, once again, the catch is the scariest thing for the orcs, being so slow. Uh, yeah, and just once again looking to deny blocks. Uh, so, on the left-hand side, the black orc and the peasant, uh, or peon, or orc lineman, uh, <laughs> uh, are fine in that they're not really getting blocked down. I do risk the catch being able to dodge out with a dodge reroll to get the assist on my thrower. But my right flank isn't looking too terrible. It's a shame I had to use five blocks to not block down the catcher. Yeah. And so that has tied up a lot of men that could otherwise have done something a little more useful. But I thought for the three dice block, uh, looking for the power, it was worth the risk. Or the, at least the cost of, of making the block. Yeah, that's fair. So now, as, as Fashband says, that, so yeah, so the dodging, the dodging is, um, yeah... Right, um, let's have a look. So, what, as Fashbinder said, alluded to, I can dodge here to his, with dodge. So, <laughs> ah, I, I thought I'd turned off the sounds, but I hadn't, right? Thanks for the follow there. Um, right, so, yeah, so, so you can see the tackle zones. The good thing about Blood Bowl 2 is it tells you where there's multiple tackle zones. So, because I'm in a tackle zone, I have to dodge out. I, this wouldn't be a dodge to move here because I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You only dodge when you move out of a tackle zone, but the modifiers come to how many you're moving into. So this second one would, would be a 17%er. So that's how dodging works. And maybe, maybe I'll just do a video that explains tackle zones and dodging because it is really important, I guess, to Blood Bowl. So that's what I'll do. And I'll just put a link to the 
the video where I do that in this game. That's at, when I make that dodge, I guess. So I guess I can forget about the dodges a little bit now. And so my plan here is to bust through this catcher here. Because it's going to be difficult. I'm going to have to make a dodge with dodge to make a block here. And I'm going to have to dodge away with my um, blitzer here. Oh, well, maybe it's not. Yeah, I'm going to have to dodge away with my blitzer here to hit him. And then I'm going to just make a pass. A passing play. Which is something you never want no, to boy. do. It's something you never want to do, but needs must when the devil drives, unfortunately. So I'm going to make my safe plays, which is standing this guy up. And standing this guy up. Because this is a pretty risky turn right now. This guy is in danger of getting surfed. Um, but at least he's marking the, the Black Orc here. So, I mean, th there is a gaping hole here if I can knock this this player down. That's the thing. But it's, it's essential to knock him down. This is going to be a tough turn. I can't move him first because... If I was to make the pass first, he'd be in a tackle zone, making it a 4 plus catch instead of a 3 plus catch, which is no need to add risk to that. So, if I fail this dodge, it could be all over. Phew. So now I get to make a block with block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. GFI. So I'm going to follow. Because I'm, I need to make the pass from that square. That's why I followed there, to make this a 3 plus pass. So, I could block him on a 1 dice. Which would then make, make, make me be able to blitz with this guy. Which would be good. That would be safer than making the dodge with a blitzer. Um, because I, but the, th the fact that I have to knock this, this chap down. If I was to blitz with this guy, I'd only be 55% to knock him down. Because I don't have block. If I blitz with this guy... I knock him down 75% of the time because I have block. So I'm going to make the dodge out rather than the block to free. He makes he makes a 3 plus, which is pretty lucky. And I have to re-roll this now. I hope it's a push. It's not a push. Right. So by pushing him there, it keeps him in the tackle zone of the guy that's already in base to base. And now I can use this extra movement to tag this guy. So he's got a dodge out to affect the play. And now I'm, I'm, now I'm no longer going to make the, G, the go for it with this guy. Um, with this thrower because a go for it is risky. You know, one in six chance of just failing is, is too much for my, for my liking. So it's a short pass, which is an unmodified agility roll, which is a four plus. The catch, you get plus one, so it's a three plus. So this is a 75% chance to make for the throw to be accurate. And then a 67%, no, no, an 8 out of 9 to catch it, 81% to catch it, is it? Yes, 89. 89, that's the one. So, you know, this is pretty good odds, isn't it? You're talking like 60-odd, something like that, to, for the whole thing to work. It should work. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> right, so now I could run to here, but then I could get put in the crowd, perhaps. So I'm going to only go to here because, um, you know, it lets him maybe reach with extra players. It lets him base with this blitzer, for example. But I really don't want to take the risk of going to the sideline. You know, it's, 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 asking, it's asking to be surfed. Um, now I can make things here. I, I do want to make... I'm going to play risky now. I'm going to make this block and skull. Okay, I ran out of time to talk about it, really. The reason that I went risky there is it does free up this guy, but these two are already free. Whereas if I had pushed him even, I get to follow up and then it's another action he has to make, which could one in nine. It could use his reroll. It was more, you know, a chance of maximizing his risk. Um, so that's why I went for that. If that had worked, even a push, I would have gone for the dodge out with this lineman to again try and just, you know, tag players to make it, in fact, dodge out and gone here and just try and make it harder for Flashbinder. Right. Over to you. Yeah, look, this was absolutely the worst case scenario for the. A little bit of dice, uh, but you know, fairly high percentage. Well, the only thing better than making you know passes and catches with three rolls is not having to make them at all. Yes. Um, but when you do have to make them, you know, making them with a throw with a throw and a, a catch with a catcher, it isn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, so I need to absolutely block this guy down this turn, uh, or he scores, and my orc offense in in five may not be as uh, as successful as a human offense mm -hmm. with the pass catch option. Um. So look, safe place first. We're going to make movement that uh, that doesn't involve any dice, 
And so it'll be the, the Blitzer to look to recover. At the same time, I know I'm going to get my number 11 line, the Blitzer out of the way for a push to try and get a block on the ball carrier. So I think my uh, lineman come to assist on this uh, on this thrower. That'll allow the Black Hawk to get two later on when more important things have been done first. Yep. I think the thrower, as he's absolutely not doing anything else, uh, can be the assist for the block to free up number seven. And now I could risk GFIs to make it a three dice. Whoa. But I, but I think that's a bit extreme. Yeah, I think that is a little extreme. Yeah. So look, in, instead, I think uh, we'll go for the ball. Uh, there is a darn blindman next to the Black Hawk on my left flank. Uh, this little Black Hawk waved his hand about. <laughs> um, but I would like to make the block to free the Dard Lyman to move to screen off the rest of his team if uh, I do get the block on the catcher. But of course the block on the catcher is far more important than risking a 1 in 9 on the on the, uh, on the the Black Hawk. So we'll leave him down for now. And so look, the next absolutely most important play, considering also that the number 3 Blitzer midfield uh, wants to sort of react to the ball or if this Blitzer blocks a push. Uh, so I think the the block on the blitz is the next most important thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, pushes. So, but that's still that's still good, isn't it? Is that not good? No, it's not good. No, you needed a beat. Not good. Pal. So, so the reason, yeah. So now it's two GFIs to hit the ball, right? If this had been a knockdown, uh, um, if this had been a knockdown, his tackle. See, because okay, I'll, I'll click. I'll show you here in, in the thing, right? Flash ban his move is to go one, two, three, four, five, and GFI to hit. Um. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, two, five. Oh, it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter. The push is okay. Ignore well, it, it would have saved a square, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. It would have been one, two, three. <laughs> no, it literally two, didn't matter. Three, four, no, it literally didn't matter. All right. It literally didn't matter. <laughs> Whether it was a power or not. But it was to, it was to, it was, it did save a GFI from where he was. And as we see, the first go for it, the first go for it that's made in the game. Not only rolls a one, but rolls a double one, <laughs> and that's never any doubt. That is that is blood bowl in a nutshell. Actually, there, you know, um, he 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 did everything right on defense. Fashbinder, he made it very hard for me. Um, there was one slight chance of me rolling some dice to get to get a breakaway. I made all the dice, and then he ha he suffers a one in thirty six chance. But this is this is great for the um, for the demo game because it just shows you how brutal going for it is. Um, Absolutely, and that was the, that was my fear for the whole catcher being movement eight. Is that often I would have to make a GFI if he did make a break, away. and that's why you should be scared of GFIs. Exactly. Yeah, this is brilliant. Um, so now, obviously, I can surf this black orc here. This is this is in something that I see instantly. Maybe beginners won't see instantly, but I have to try and surf this guy. So the way I do that is. Catcher goes here, of course, he's strength four. I need to be strength five to get two dice. Because it's with block, it's it's pretty it's a pretty safe move. I can go for it. And I get the both down, which is okay. I would have I would have rather got a push and then move my blitzer to here. And then when this lineman blocked him, he couldn't have pushed him here because there was a player there. So the other two squares would have been the side off the pitch and you'd have been injured automatically so that's that would have been great to have got the push there but i'm not going to risk a re-roll you know and something failing um i could think about stalling it out now a little bit because i'm actually in a really good position now <laughs> so that's a bit interesting isn't it do you think i should try and stall it fash binder um oh well, the blitz consumed it might be We'll see how this goes. I think with a mm. casualty here, I could think about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, we get the pow. Hey, nearly, nearly a casualty. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, I could move this guy to here. And I could think, because it doesn't cost me anything, does it, to move there first? Because I can just score if I want by moving, moving my movement squares. Or I could maybe come back to like here. Oh god, I've done it. I oh boy! 
I misclicked. Looks like the stall's on. Dear me. So I was just meant to be th showing my thinking there. I think I probably would have scored because now things have got the potential to go worse. <laughs> oh, man. Not not ideal there, is it? So Fashbinder purposely didn't stand this throw up so he wouldn't get knocked down with block last turn. But actually it could have led to his um, black hole getting surfed, which was fun. I think it's okay to go back here to stall, to be honest. I don't think it's terrible. Um, I'm going to go one more back. But I didn't mean... I was just meant to be showing where I was thinking. Where, where was an option? That was, It was simply an option. I think I would have scored because it's unlikely for the Orcs to score in four turns with a re-roll. I would have been, felt confident with three re-rolls of stopping him scoring in four turns. But, unfortunately, I misclicked. Which is something that would never happen um, on tabletop. But there you go. I could one dice this guy, then one dice him. But because his players are so slow, I think I'm better off just making some crazy dodges this turn now to try and shore things up a little bit. Um, this is just a three plus to get a two dice on the ball. It sure is. So I can make two GFIs to shut that down completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dodge and move. So dodge and move to here first. So if I use my reroll on the on the dodge, I'll have him in a good position. <laughs> I will use my reroll on the dodge. And I fail the one in nine, which is fair enough. But um, not quite fair enough. <laughs> Well, and double, double ones feels pretty bad. It was a double one. It was fair enough because you would fail the double one to hit my ball last turn. But that was really bad showing my options and then clicking it. That was that was a really bad mistake. But I mean, this was... It wasn't so bad to stall here, I don't think. I don't think this was such a bad move. It is a 3 plus 2 plus for Fashbinder to get the hit on the ball. He doesn't have block. He only has one reroll. If he, if he fails this, then I just get to score next turn, potentially. Um, or stall out longer, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great stalling by accident. <laughs> no, definitely not. The reason it's a one in nine, um, Dream of BG, is because it was a dodge into the open field. That's a three plus on one dice, um, because he's agility three. Seven minus three is a target of four. He gets plus one for making a dodge roll, which makes it a three plus, leaving you a one in three chance to fail. Because I'm willing to use a re-roll on that one in three chance then it becomes 1 in 3 times 1 in 3, which is a 1 in 9 to fail. All right, looking at your catcher's position, it is in scoring range. So I think if I don't hit it, I might be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So that will be my rationale for going for the 3 plus dodge to 2 dice to carrier and being somewhat content with a both down result. Yes. Yeah, that's important. Sometimes you're going to be happy with getting the both downs, aren't you? Um, more than likely when you're hitting a ball carrier who doesn't have block, then you can be more likely to, to accept a both down. Mostly you're not going to accept both downs because they end your turn. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I've almost moved my entire team without having all the dice. Sounds like making safe moves first. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? It does. Now, there's unfortunately, we haven't made a cage in this game, have we? We haven't made the standard X cage, which is to protect the ball, but you do need to think about protecting the ball. Um, mine was out of range for most of the part, and then it was nearly out of range there, and then now he's, he's in range and not very protected, unfortunately. As you can see, there's a the gap here. If I'd made these this dodge and two GFIs, it, the ball would have been completely safe. Now, does Fashbinder use his last reroll? That's the question. He doesn't want to. He really doesn't want to. <laughs> Balls deep. Balls <laughs> deep. <laughs> Keep it PG, I, please, Fashbinder. I admittedly, did, I admittedly <laughs> didn't think it through. <laughs> Right, and he, he gets his 30% knock. No, it's, it was, to be fair, it was more than 30% knockdown because he would have accepted both down. But he gets a, an even better result than the both down that he was he would have accepted. An amazing result. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, look, the thrower seems to be, like, the most likely person that wants to pick up the ball. When the catcher stands, the blitzer makes a block and can uh, get the ball unmarked. Um... 
Yeah, and look, then the catcher dodges around, the blitzer frees the thrower, thrower then has the ball. So the recovery here for the humans isn't hard. Uh, maybe I risk a one dice with my lineman to push the thrower away. Mm. I mean, Jim does have two rerolls still, so he doesn't strictly need to throw it. Any human can pick it up. So, so this 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 block here is what he's thinking about. One and three, he ends the turn, um, but ending the turn is okay because the turn's ended anyway, right? So it's it's mm. it's really the one in six he gets sculled. That works out pretty badly for him. Um, the push works, but out. not radically worse than not doing anything. No, not radically. Well, that's that's what he has to work out. Exactly. If it's radically worse, or you know, if he's happy with the both down, if he's happy with a skull. If if you're not too unhappy with the skull, you make the block, like that re-roll there to make the two D. I can see why he did it because obviously it was very figure. risky. It's not not something you should rely on. Yeah, you've got to figure that um, if he doesn't re-roll it and he doesn't make that hit, then I'm probably going to score on turn seven or turn eight, and he's not going to score even with a re-roll. So I, I can certainly understand him going for that re-roll. Although Moldripster said he didn't think it was right to use the re-roll in that position. Um, no, I didn't either. It was definitely it wasn't right, but I... but then it's, it's hard to say out. things are wrong as well, My isn't it? Ball. You know, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl's a funny old game. It's very hard to say what the what the absolute um, you know right move is, or if there even is an absolutely right move in any situation. But you know, I'm yeah, down. It came down to the best case scenario. Uh, uh, you, let's say worst case scenario, you score, and it, I've got three turns to score myself. And because you got a bench, both KOs not waking up, you've still got 10. I don't think this Orc team in its current state has the capacity to really make a solid effort against a 10-man human that can just thoroughly man-mark them. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're just not quite up to the task. So this is, this is difficult happy. for me. Yeah, this is difficult for me now. So I think it, you, know, you can definitely say it was worth it. Very difficult. I mean, I should have scored when I had the chance. <laughs> I was just, I was just trying to show <laughs> what I could have done. Um, but that's the, it's not about win or lose, is it? This game, right? So I'm going to stand these guys up. I mean, it was an option to stall, like I did. So I'm not going to lose sleep over it. This isn't great standing these up, but still, it's done, isn't it? What I think I want to do is I want to make these dodges out, and then if I don't use my dodge reroll, I'll keep going here. Then this gives me a two dice blitz out. A block here and then I can make some kind of crazy play I mean this is not something that I endorse but it's the, it's the stage that I've got to you know the balls on the ground I'm down two players I'm out strengthed um, and I'm not really in a good position I think I've got to start rolling dice rolling rolling cubes to get out to save myself here do you agree with that Fashbinder? well that, that was my plan it was to try and make it as hard as I can uh, you definitely want to score. The catcher is not really currently in a good position. Mm -hmm. I, the the fear is that the blitzer gets caught, but I do have no rerolls, so like a single GFI becomes really costly for me. Yeah. Um, blocks for a push also really costly. And in, in the ball in the hands of the block blitzer, you know, not the worst person to hold the ball. So it, look, it, it's going to be dicey. You're like. The same as the last couple of turns. Yep, it is. So I'm going to make this one but dodge they're, first. They're not outrageous. So it's a three one plus, at a time for sure. Yeah, it's a three plus dodge because I'm agility three. Um, I do have the dodge skill, so if I fail, I can re-roll it. But you can only use dodge once. So now, if I was to make another dodge, it would be a three plus, and if I wanted to re-roll, I'd have to use a team re-roll, which makes it something that I don't really want to do, because him making one dice block is essentially a three plus roll as well. Um, I'm going to make this block now because I still haven't used my blitz yet so I'm just going to make a block block try to get this guy on the sideline or cast or something okay so I knock him down that's ideal I could maybe go 4 5, 6, 7, 8 here which isn't great but at least I'd have the ball on a dodger that'd be that his block player would be taken up here but it would be easy to get a push and then 2 dice the ball um, maybe even three dice the ball with block, which would be very bad for me. Um, I could dodge here. 
I could blitz one dice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, run, run away to here and then go for the pass to him. I think that's actually worth it. That's what I'm going to go for. You might, you may think it's a bit crazy here, guys, but this is what happens, you know, when you when things don't go perfectly. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I just want to go straight forward like this, or even maybe not. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, I mean, this is this is really pretty bad. <laughs> Um, right, I'm going to, go for the, going to go for the pass to him. Obviously, I'll use my reroll to pick up the ball here. 3 plus, because he's agility 3. And then I'll run here. So now I'm at least I'm basing the thrower, um, which is good. I need the throw. And I think I'll make Some the Some very agile humans today. They are indeed. I think I make the reroll here because um, I just want. Uh, he hasn't got any rerolls, so if he he's only fifty five percent to knock me down with two dice. So and that's if he can get the two dice, which it looks like he's gonna get. Um, I have to make this one dice block because if I push him, this gives me a play to base his blitzer here, which makes things again harder for him. But I fail that chance. It was a three plus. I rolled a one. Um, but yeah. So I mean, this is an easy two dice, really. But he could fail, couldn't he? He's got to roll dice. That's the important thing. At least, at least we're making him roll dice. I have my catcher who can recover if he, if I do lose the ball. So um, it's not the end of the world. Oh man, I wouldn't mind, as I don't have a reroll down, I wouldn't mind the amount of the follow-up block. That then becomes a risk on its own, doesn't it? Yep. And I think that that would be a risk too high. Let's, so let's consider the options. If the midfield lineman number 8 makes a GFI to this square, yep. uh, the blitzer then makes a block for a push and is able to be pushed into uh, number 7 lineman, who then makes a follow-up block, and I've got a bunch of orcs around where the ball will be, and that'll be pretty good. Yeah. But I'm risking a GFI without a reroll, and that's just terrifying. You would also have to GFI yeah. with the um, with the blitzer then as well. Yeah. So it'd be two and GFIs. then you just then you're just walking in. Yeah. Whereas I think the safer play is the blitzer number four making a block on the lineman to free the peasant for the assist. The blitz comes in from the blitzer without a GFI, and I've got three men around the ball. Yeah. Uh, if or even if it is pushes, that still makes it a little bit hard. So I think that'll be the way to go. Yeah. So as it's turn six, really running out of time. Well, not not running out of time, but uh, wanting to get people relevant. Yeah. Uh, making some safe plays. Yeah. Always good. Always good. Remember to make those movement ac move actions that don't require dice, that aren't dependent on other things happening first. I'm surprised at the lack of follow-up there. I would, the reason for not following was I wanted your to, to not be able to interact post-blitz. Yes, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, this guy, if you'd followed, this guy would have a free 3-plus dodge out, whereas now he keeps him kind of hemmed in at the sideline. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's also uh, the, the push uh, on the blitz, where your blitz will end up will be in front of the lineman that I just moved. And by staying there, he creates an extra set of tackle zones to make any dodges out a bit harder. Yeah, well, see, I would have expected you to move the lineman here or here. but um... I can't see here or here. <laughs> ah, yeah, oh, so sorry, yeah. I was, it was for the benefit of the people on the thing, but gets the power anyway. Both both dice were a power. Unbelievable. 55% to get that result. Um, I could count myself a little unlucky to suffer that with no rerolls. If Flashbinder had a reroll, then obviously I'd have expected my guy to be punished. 
Yeah, well, look, uh, two blocks of block, I don't think I would. On a push, he's standing holding the ball where he is, and he's four plus three plusing out, barring, you know, some other sort of dicey assisting. Yeah. And so it's really just preparing for that failure state. Yeah. And I now have the dilemma of, uh, do I GFI to pick up the ball? The ball yeah. on the hand would be amazing. The scatter is not currently in a bad spot. Blitzer on the ground would be terrible, and that your blitzer one Ds uh, for a push, and your catcher dodges out and gets through. Yep. In fact, the catch is still a really, uh, like a really big threat. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, nothing else really matters too much. The top to get the throw to make a block on a success, and my lineman's got a two D on the catcher. And that's at the LOS. Yep. But they don't really matter. No. Comparing yeah. to having the ball in my hand. Yep. Similarly, if I make the GFI and don't fall over, I've created really strong tackle zones for stopping the catcher from getting through. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I think that's going to be worth it. Uh, but being on the ground is going to be pretty bad. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I still think you, 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 uh, the human catch is able to three plus out, uh, four plus pick up, four plus dodge, three plus dodge, and with a team roll, that's not looking too terrible. So I'm going to risk to go for it. It's not definitely right, but it's also not definitely wrong. Indeed. Got and it. best case scenario, picked up the ball, and now I can make the you know, other blocks that I had planned. Yep. So, a uh, very fortunate turn. Certainly compared to the <laughs> rolling of one in sixes, uh, one in thirty sixes. <laughs> yep. Happy with the both down on the catcher from the lineman? Yep. Don't get to. And that was actually pretty important because this catcher could still move around to be a bit relevant. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really, I'm really pushing it now, aren't I, to get anything going here. Um, I don't really want an uphill block. That seems awful. Um, this is what I'm doing to make it a one dice on the ball. That's outrageous. Um, yet, I don't see anything else. <clears throat> Well, it could be the catcher four plus blitz of blitzes. Then you've got the ball on the ground. And you've still got the extra turn next turn. Yeah. I'm still in the no reroll state. Yeah. It's just if you, if you fail this turn, you're definitely not scoring. Whereas, yeah. uh, whereas if you did make the the catcher for the assist to get a lucky one D, yeah, that's they're all. There's not going to be a good play where someone says yes, this is the most optimal right mm -hmm. thing to do. Everything is going to be yeah. really gross. This um, is so hard to make all of this that I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. It'll almost it. be unrealistic. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm, as Fashbinder says, I'm going to go for this four plus dodge to one dice the ball. Um, as as unexciting as that is, I'm going to save these guys to make crazy moves afterwards. I'm not going. I'm going to stand him up though. And um, yeah, let's go for this. Okay, so it was a four plus because I was I had to dodge because I was in a tackle zone. So that's a three plus dodge. I was dodging into one tackle zone, which made it minus one for a four plus dodge. And I had dodge. So it was a seventy five percent to work, which is alright. And then yeah, I can blitz this guy here. And even okay, anything but a skull is good. Because even getting the push, he's in two tackle zones. He's got no rerolls. Something could happen. Now this guy stands up because I don't make more rolls. And because he has dodge, he can dodge out of there and kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so that, Tis that, but a scratch. <laughs> so that, um, he, he injured, injured, good. Justice, justice there. Um, so you can see the nice animation when somebody gets crowd surfed in, in Blood Bowl 2. So, you know, I had to move him here, otherwise the push would have just put him there, and it would have been one dice. This not only gave me two dice, it also occupied one of the three squares that were possible, um, which meant that he had to go in the crowd there. And this guy, I think, makes a dodge to base both of these, or just one. Hmm... Just standing where he is just doesn't do anything, does it? Maybe I shouldn't have stood him up. Maybe I should have... Uh, well, it, it could free the lineman scoring threat, which... Then the next topic for next turn. Yeah, there is actually... Yeah, that's very true. This this, this is Fashbinder's 
Flashbinder could score himself, couldn't he? Um, so yeah, I think I think I actually have to get this guy in contact. No, both of them. I have to get both in contact. Because Fashbine has a sweet play open to him if he spots it. You mean the chain push to free my guy? Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh boy. <laughs> I guess he has spotted it. So what he wants to do <laughs> is <laughs> So chain push. I also want to make it safe. That's that that's all I can carry on go. Tell the chain chain push uh, yeah. story. So what what happens with chain pushes is if if let's say for example he he's to he's blitz this thrower was to blitz this lineman. Um, from here. He can push him to here, here or here. So there's only one place for him to go. However, if this place was occupied, he would push him into that square and then push the other player again. So, where we have it in relevance here, I've got a catcher here. He could go here and blitz the catcher. If he was to have players here and here, then he could power the catcher, knock him down, push him to here and get rid of the blitzer as well, thus clearing both tackle zones from his is blitzer here so this is what he wants to engineer um, but he's going to have yeah to, absolutely he would have to make a 1 in 9 block a block without block to set it up now because I made that dodge yeah and I don't really want to make blocks without block so uh, Indeed. by tagging 2 as opposed to 1 it's it's been fairly well prevented Oh well, we're risking for the biscuit. <laughs> push, push, not good enough for the um, for what you what you wanted really, is it? Well, I mean, there's many ways to skin a cat. Yeah, true, true. Uh, so like, I could come from the top with the thrower, could come from the bottom with the lineman, or the lineman assisting the blitzer. Yeah. Um, the dilemma is with the thrower hitting the catcher to do it. Uh, the catcher would need it to be powered. And I yes. can't take the both down result. Exactly, yeah. That is the thing, yeah. Which is uh, super gross. Yeah. Super gross. Hmm. So that was that was a nice little move to tag them in the end, wasn't it? It seemed like a stupid Absolutely. it seemed like a stupid move giving up a two dice block, but that was that was the idea. It was to prevent this chain push. Which it looks to have done. Well, it's, it's prevented the, the scarier chain push, shall we say. Or the easy chain push, or the yeah. safe chain push. Yeah, the safe chain push, yeah, that's the one. I mean, I, I could risk a 1D. Yeah. Actually, what if I 1D'd with the Blitzer, push the... Nah, it doesn't really matter. Maybe if I stayed with the lineman, I could have got the follow-up chain. Maybe. Uh, with the thrower. Oh boy, scary times, Jim. <laughs> yeah. uh, ultimately, so because I'm so scared of rolling dice with no reroll, especially blocks with block uh, without block, uh, the other option could be uh, to blitz away his blitzer with my blitzer, blitz away uh, block his uh, catcher with my uh, ball carrier, have the thrower attempt to screen and look for a turn, uh, hold the ball, yeah. uh, and then do the passing play on a turn where I don't have any failure state of my opponent scoring. Yeah. So I yeah. think that might actually be better. Yeah, safety first at this point, yeah. Hmm. Even listen, the catcher might not be bad. Yeah, this is this is an option. One, two, three, four, five. Wouldn't have to GFI. Oh no, I'm thinking about just making a uh, oh. attempt at a cage. Alright, blitz this guy. Yeah, blitz the catcher with him, and then block the blitzer with the... Yeah, yeah fair enough. So only a push. Ooh. And he gets the... He gets the knockdown. So now I've really... I've only got this catcher who can realistically score. Ah, but the the, th the blitz is actually a scoring threat now, isn't it? No, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> no, no. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. I'm gonna look for my scoring threats. I think. No, not anymore. 
No, oh, interesting because if you'd um, if you'd block, use the thrower, thrower instead. Yeah, I just wanted the thrower yeah. to get the assist on uh, for the black oak block to to squeeze out the rest of your team. Mm. Trade offs left and right. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was fair enough because this this play is good. If you hadn't got him in there, then this would have been. Um, there would have been so much pressure on the ball. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That was that was a pretty pretty great um, pretty great move actually. Although it, it although it cost you the chance of a score pretty much. Um, well, this is the other option. I could dodge him out as a final act. You could, you could actually. Yeah. Could. All right. Similarly, I'm thinking about the uh, the block on the thrower taking them both down. Oh, uh, the catcher, sorry. Roll. We don't have much time at all. Got the Force power. rolling powers. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. And this makes the semblance, yeah. semblance of a gauge. Unbelievable, Joe. Oh, and a dodge. <laughs> right. No, they're out of time. So now, now, I mean, it's so hard for me. I would have to dodge in a four plus into a one dice. To get a five plus, basically a power of power push, to pop the ball, get a scatter over here somehow, and then he dodges away on a three plus, picks it up on a four plus, dodges away on a three plus, <laughs> passes it on a four plus, he catches, he dodges out, makes two GFIs. I mean, my score is so unlikely that it's easier. I think it's best just to give up on it and make sure I knock down this this orc who can score. <laughs> Um, Please don't hurt him. <laughs> unfortunately, this is it. Yeah, Never lucky. Now. So I didn't make any any safe moves there, because really it didn't matter. I don't think it mattered. I mean, if I stand this guy up, he gets surfed, so I can't stand him up. If I stand this guy up, he just gets punched. So there's no real point in doing that. Um, this guy could actually get surfed as well, couldn't he? At the moment, yeah, number eleven lineman for sure. Yeah, um, so that makes me want to do something <laughs> to make sure he doesn't get surfed. Maybe just to dodge out. I mean, these are bad, bad roles. Basically, just choosing to put myself at risk. But my option, to me, there better an armor roll and a kaz roll than just a kaz roll. Exactly. Yeah. So, fail and into stunned isn't the end of the world. Unfortunately for the Orkies, me scoring threats being caught. Uh, absolutely the, the right thing to do with the play to score for the humans being just unrealistic. So I guess I just make some uh, some blocks. Yep. With not much else to do. No. Should look to make him three dice there. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 foul is an option, um, but with that Kaz that I've made, so yeah, yeah you can, you with can the Kaz. foul. You can foul, but um, in Blood Bowl, it's not unsportsmanlike or anything on any turn of the game. <laughs> um. But it's the risk of getting sent off is is makes it something that you don't normally want to do, especially not at a thousand TV where the diff the difference in players isn't so much. Exactly, like had I not removed uh, those two linemen, would have been a much easier offense. Yeah, yeah, I did have two two guys KO'd, and I mean I would have scored normally. I was just showing the option of stalling. <laughs> I don't think it was the right option to stall there. <laughs> Um, I would have scored and let you try to score in four turns with one reroll, um, but you know it's okay. That's the sort of thing that happens in in Blood Bowl two anyway on the PC game where you can make misclicks. Um, obviously, it would ne really never three happens dice. in tabletop. I'm surprised that you didn't just make a straight up blitz to to make you know to make it with block. Um, no, it was a GFI for the thrower, and I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm a lineman. Yeah. I would have just made this blitz straight straight up, but now you get a three dice on him, mean, which is good.
And now you get to make the pass, so a 3 plus 3 plus to maybe get a star player point is, is something that you do at the end of most um, most halves or whatever um, of Blood Bowl in progression formats where you get star player points. It's worth it's worth the cheeky chance of an extra star player point. I need one of these to uh, come Yeah, back. absolutely. With MVPs being worth 5 and a pass being worth 1, uh, and 6 needing, being needed for a level, I think it's remiss not to if you're given the opportunity. Yep, and especially in, in with the new tabletop MVP rules, makes those those pass plays much better. Which is nominate three players for an MVP, and then roll a D3 to see who it is. So I mean that is that rule is not on Blood Bowl two, but I think it's a great rule for tabletop. So we saw one one style of defense from Fashbinder, which was um. Which was um, the the kind of ziggurat. ziggurat, yep, wide defense. This is the narrow defense, um, rule of five defense. It's been called smiley because um, it's a bit like a smiley or a boat. Um, there's all sorts of names for it, but this is let's say the rule of five. the The idea with this setup is you have your five best players protected, um, so they're protected from a blitz. He, as you saw, Fashbinder only had two players protected. Um, this is kind of a better setup at higher team values where basically the killing power of teams goes up as players have Mighty Blow and Claw and um, you know, Tackle, stuff like this, not piling on in tabletop. Um, but so, so in that case, it's worth protecting your best players from getting blitzed. And all, all, all these players are able to then go wherever the drive goes. They're able to react. Um, I think you can it's get away... It's good for the faster for sure. Yeah, I think you can get away with only ever using the rule of five setup and the ziggurat setup. You could basically only use use those two setups as your only two setups and be fine. Um, the only other ways you want to set up is realistically that you can do tricky things if you want, but as base setups, they're the best two base setups. And then the only other thing is like one turn touchdowns, which are more advanced, and um, but setting up just to, to counter one turn touchdowns or. If you score on turn eight of your half and your opponent only has one turn and they don't have a chance to score on one turn, then just line them up across the back. But um, I really do like the rule of five defense with almost any team, even at this low TV where the, these guys aren't really worth protecting. I still think it's fine because it lets you react to wherever your opponent goes or whatever your opponent does. Um, so there you go, that's my defense. I think, I think it's, you know, speed's an issue too. Like, let's say uh, the scores were tied and it was turn 13. That would be perhaps not the setup. Or even even if I was uh, a high elf and I'd, I'd be happy just scoring on you, or if I was up men, uh, I think I think I like the rule of five setup more when I'm the faster team to guarantee that I can react to it. Or at least my uh, my opponent isn't that. Yeah. And if you're against, like, a two-turn touchdown attempt, then you probably want to go something like this Garak to stop them breaking through. Like like the way Fashbinder didn't have his Blackhawks on the outside. If if he had to defend a two turn touchdown, he probably would have put the Blackhawks on the outsides, I think. To just guarantee no breakthrough and you know, stuff like that. Absolutely. This setup is the rule of five so. Five. Just basically protects your best five players. Uh, my serve is just to protect against the Blitz with the uh, Black Hawk and Peons on the side. Uh, <laughs> bit of a man commitment, but we're going to be making blocks to block. And with uh, the curiosity of the tabletops to throw a setup, going to make use of them just so they can react to a ball uh, almost anywhere. Yeah. And then make a, a nice safe cage, nice safe progression of the ball, keeping it safe. And yep. uh, hopefully walk down the field and score on turn 16. Yep, that is the plan. Unopposed. That is the plan for Orcs. I mean, it's a shame really that I didn't get the score because it would have been interesting to see Orcs trying to score in turn 4 and then the difference between them scoring in turn 4 and trying to score in turn 4 and trying to score in 8 turns would be would be pretty cool. But um, instead we've seen we've seen a drive that was went badly and then was was rescued and stuff and so it was it was a pretty interesting half i think the first one so now perfect yeah, defense definitely. perfect defense here I'd, should i should i utilize this or should i just leave in the base stay in the base defense what do you think Flashbinder? 
Well, there's also the kicks to consider that too, uh, with a you know reasonable chance that it's hunchback. A heavy commitment could you know get you really tangled up against the orcs. That's what the orcs want. I don't think you'd ever think that the orcs will struggle to get a block and yeah. uh, and bang it down. I think we go back to turn one and think about always minimizing the amount of blocks that can be made. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, for the demonstration, do you think I should? Oh, uh, it doesn't. Use... Whichever you think's the best play in this situation, so people can look back and say, "Oh, I remember that time Jimmy Fantastic had that uh, perfect defense on that short kick." Yeah. Uh, where yeah. you really wanted a turnover to win. Like that's the other thing too. Like yeah, by you not scoring, we have a we have a we still have a ball game. You can turn over and score a lot easier than than uh, the Orcs could have. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also playing for for the win rather than the draw. Like you score, I score, I'm not not too interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um. I mean, it isn't a showcase of safe plays, but it could be a showcase of uh, you know aggression turning over a uh, slightly stronger bash team. Yeah. So let's try and get. I mean, he's got a fifty-fifty chance to catch this, right? He's agility three, which which gives him a natural four plus. It's and um, there's no modifiers for catching this. So he, he, by do I want him to catch it? I would rather he caught it than get a touchback, but would I? Because I, then he gets... At least he's making less block. Aloy, Aloy would have the ball on a movement six block player. At least he wouldn't be able to make as many block blocks. Um, so I think it's worth letting, giving him the 50-50 to catch it. Also, if he fails to catch it, chances are it's behind there. So I, there's, there's certainly an argument for just committing to the line here, but he does have the strength to crack me and then block all the way down the line, which would be terrifying. On the other hand, I could just put every man on the line and just hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's not even a bad strategy, though, is it? To be honest. We all and know literally it. not at all. No, it's really not a bad strategy. And it's just that it doesn't it doesn't look like a... Pro but we've had a half that was a proper half, I guess. So let's just do it, eh? Balls to the wall. Oh, boy. All men's, all men's L LOS is a is a fumble meme, and um, it's certainly got some merit here. If, if he fails the, uh, he's just gonna pick it up though with with sure hands and with have the ball here and just knock down. But all the dilemma players. is, all my players will be committed, and your slightly faster team can make a clutch dodge to get the ball and score. And I'm only moving five squares with a throw if it does fall back. So like, I don't hate the all men's here. Yeah. Like, if, if you're looking for the turnover to win. <laughs> um, yeah, he's going he's gonna to be able to crack one side of it. Yeah. But then I'm going to have players, fast players, free. No block to deal with my dodges. My blockers will be able to make one dice blocks um, if they don't go down. Um, I've got my throwers... On the wings, actually, throwers and catchers on the wings. I've got to, I've got to play very aggressive here. Um, I think if I want to win, if I wanted to draw, I wouldn't have to do that. Um, Absolutely. But I'm running out of time, and I'm going to go for the win. And of course, he gets the touchback. Praise Nuffle. Yeah. What do you think about a cheeky Black Hawk handoff? <laughs> I think not, <laughs> not with, not really, not not in not this, in this base not, situation. Yeah, not Absolutely. in this situation. Yeah, um, if you weren't based, if you had made a couple of removals, um, if you had skills on the rest of the team. Um, all right. So this is this going to be a basic X cage? It looks it looks somewhat like it. Well, a little bit staggered in that I'm not sure what's happening with the LOS yet. Yeah, and uh, the one Ds are scary. So I'd like the line to be in front of the. Sewer cage. Yeah. But it's a hefty man commitment. It certainly is. That's that's the thing. Like this is this is a really risky strategy. Um basically if if we were in a progression, like if we were in a league environment, I probably wouldn't so maybe I shouldn't have done this because you're more likely gonna be in a league environment where you don't want to take loads of hits on your armor eight. So maybe I should have gone for the more cautious route and maybe maybe delay him and maybe just make it a nil nil. But then maybe a nil nil wouldn't be a wouldn't be a great a great game for football, would it? <laughs> for the uh, intro game, a dour nil nil. <laughs> I 
Yeah, no, look, it's still going to be a bit uh, a bit rowdy. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be at least three 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 blocks without block. Um, yeah. Well, at least four, I guess. So I'm going to keep the ball safe first. Make safe plays first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. Something to plan my blitz to. Yeah, that's what, always what I'm asking at the start of my turn is, where's my blitz going? Um, All right, I think so that's I'm, the most, <laughs> the most important part, really. I think the blitz uh, for a 1D on a fellow without block to open up the line, then the Black Orc can... Oh, boy. I mean, it's funny, because if this was a full Orc team against a human team and the orc team had got perfect defense and they just had four black orcs and a troll <laughs> <laughs> this is people are looking horrific for the humans um you know but now it's still looking a bit dodgy for the humans isn't it <laughs> even so like it is does make a big difference that strength difference absolutely um but i still think i might need to make safe place first i really don't like the one no, exactly, even with yeah. block yeah, exactly. It's it's still it's the, still the old man's is really making me commit, and then that isn't keeping the ball safe. Yep. Yep. There's something to be said for just putting some putting some pressure on. Tell you what, I'm going to chicken out, and I'm going to try and make the ball safe. Yeah. So, are you going to make the fabled X cage? Uh sort of. Let's sort see. Of. So I'll I'll talk Let's about see it. See how so, the one days go. Yeah, go for it. I'm, so, I'm, I'm <laughs> struggling with struggling with safe plays. <laughs> so if he'd put another player here, this is what would be the standard X cage, where you have your ball carrier in the middle, four players on each corner of it, like in four, you know, forming an X um, in his tackle zone. And what that means is, if a player was to try and hit him, he would have to make a dodge roll with a minus three modifier, would be the only way to hit the ball, and that is the standard X cage. Um, but there's loads of variants, you know. Like it's that's basically the safest cage you can make with the smallest commitment. Um, but ooh, <laughs> here we are, I see the instant payoff. Instant oh payoff. boy, I I I think I'm bound if I don't reroll it. So that's that's a third of his rerolls gone. He's only got two rerolls for the rest of the rest of the half, and rest of the and match. It's still not safe. It's still one days. A one dice without block, no less. Indeed. Whoa. But I need to block down the line, or uh, I'm in a bit in a, in a ton of trouble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think even before making that two dice, the black orc should have just come across. He wasn't really doing anything else. I wanted to see how well how successful the blocks were, and if I could yeah. commit the black orc to basing if the blocks were mostly successful. Yeah. But even in his current position, he's not terrible. No, true. I'll tell you what. Time off, Ashbinder. <laughs> I am running out of time. We'll just make some, make make some dice happen. Yep. If we get a Kaz here, this will be the the reward for this effort. Yep. So yeah, keep me based there. Only a push, thanks to thanks to my guy having the block skill. Could work block skill. I think we're going to have to put a bit of pressure on here. Ooh. Risky business. More oh, punished. Ooh. Punished indeed. So I can crack open the line here and have a one dice or maybe a two dice at the ball here. So it instant... enormously cracked. Hopefully, it won't be two. Instant, instant payoff from this all mensing here. So now, do I stand this guy up? Yes. This is the only move that I know that I'm going to do. Um, I can block this Black Orc here. I can block him here. And I can move an assist in with this guy and blitz with this guy. If I get a pow on the Black Orc here, I can, um, I can make some magic happen. Where do these Absolutely. guys go? I guess they just go all mans the way, the way it's been going, you know? Just keep them... Keep them involved. Um, yeah, let's just get them in. Make the safe moves. So here it is. This is this is huge, isn't it? This two dice block here. If this is a pow, 
good things can happen. No. Oof. <laughs> um, I'm just going to keep him in and have another two dice of him. But do this two dice as well first. Right, so we do get him down. So that's good. Um, two dice because I had the assist. So now I can still get two. No, I can't. I can only get one dice now. Oh no, I can't. I can just get two. He can block him, can't he? I'd have to put an assist in first. There's still a chance of a and two dice. And the hole would be filled. There's still a chance of a two dice. I'm pretty sure there's still a chance of a two dice on the ball here. I don't reckon there's a chance of a two dice on the ball here. I reckon there is. Let's see, get a power. Let's get a power so I can prove it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, so we get him in there. We move the catcher here. We move this catcher mm -hmm. here. The block on the... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Next level. <laughs> right, so now we get the two dice, this guy. Unfortunately, uh -huh. we only get the push. Um, if I'd got the pow, I would have powered him to here. My guy would have... Oh, no, if I'd got the power to power in there, wouldn't I? You know, that was great, the, the cheeky chain push. Yeah, cheeky chain push. So the power to push into there, and then this would have come in for a two dice on the ball. But as it is, even though I don't have block, I still think I'm going to go in for the one dice on the ball. I think I'm going to move this guy here. I'd love to GFI, though, wouldn't I? I would love to GFI to just keep him all tied up in tackle zones. Um... But then if I get the pow here, then I can push him out and then move this guy around and try to do something with the ball. One in three. Do I re-roll it if I fail? The... I'll take the both down, certainly. Do I re-roll the skull? I guess I do. So I'll, I'll make the one dice. I don't know. It's final action. There's not much else happening on it. All right. So we get the push. So I think I want to go up here. And I keep him in the tackle zone of my catcher, and it means that I've got a chance of coming for a GFI here to sandwich him. And now it's worth making the GFI now, isn't it? Oh, and of course the GFI fails. We've rolled a lot of failures of, of go for it's in this match. I'm gonna re-roll it. I have to. It keeps the pressure on him. Um, it's huge pressure. Yeah, huge pressure here. Um, perfect defense has, has worked out pretty, pretty perfectly so far. Um, so yeah, that that was a li I went a little bit fast there, didn't I? But um, that that was the idea was this this was getting that power to chain push him out and then get the two dice on the ball would have been really nice. I don't think it was worth re-rolling a push on the ball. Um, no, definitely not because then there's the boat down and the the skull. It's uh, it's a turnover. You were happy with the boat down though initially. Yeah, yeah, I would have I would have, I would have been happy on a, both down on the first dice. Using a re-roll on then sculling would have been horrible, especially as this guy would have been mm. out of position. Um, so there you go. Hopefully you follow that turn. Um, right, but he's he's under a lot of pressure now. He, he, one of his strength four players is out of the out of the rook, which is nice. And uh, but the other one is letting him crack down a little bit. But still, this is a little bit of a tough, bit tricky, bit of a tricky situation. It's very tricky. Uh, so I think I want to be blitzing. Really want to reform to the left hand side of, of field from my perspective. Um, Locks on catches, blitzes to free uh, to free the thrower, and hopefully uh, the semblance of a rotated cage. Yeah. It won't be a cage though, but yeah, keeping the ball safe will be the the top priority. Getting rid of the three men that are honest. Uh, there is the potential for the chain on the thrower that frees a lineman, uh, which could be nice. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the most important thing will be blocking catches and blocking them in a manner that allows me to be happy with a push. Uh, so it'll be the throw on the catcher for a push. The blitz uh, from the downed fella will allow for a 2D. And then the inside lineman can block out the thrower, which will have my thrower safe. Yep. I think that's the, the similar to the plan. Yep. But there are there are blocks without block involved. In it. Now, as you can it's see, that was, a, that was a power push there, which, um, which you know, the dodge... The, bit, that, that, the survivability of dodge is fantastic, even though they're strength two. Um, dodge is very, very powerful.
So, obviously you have to follow up there because even if you're just going to stay where you are, you might as well follow up, see what happens, and then you can go back. Because, you know, because you can carry on moving after a blitz. Um, even if he intended to stay where he was, he would have followed up just to see what happened, and then he could have moved back if he wanted. Hmm. And quite a predicament, Jim. Quite the predicament. Yeah, it is. It is the perfect defence. Is is at low TV is often a. Often game changer, even even at high TV. But at high TV, you're you're less light, you're less able to push the pressure because people have more guard and mighty blow, and the risk is even higher, isn't it, at high TV? Here, I'm giving up a lot of blocks, but a lot of them aren't with block, and, and they're very scary. And I think you yeah. consider each one so much so that my mouth <laughs> gets to work when I'm thinking that hard. Yeah. In that, I have to consider, you know, what happens if that blocks a push? Who's then free? What follow-up block do I have? Yeah, uh, it, it's quite the predicament. Like, there's, a, there's a big cluster around the uh, the blitzer in the center. You know, I've got a, uh, a block on on the catcher uh, for two, but then you know, what does that really create? Yeah, uh, eleven lineman can two D the uh, human eleven lineman free up number twelve lineman could even look to screen off downfield, and that wouldn't even be bad. Yep. There's a lot of thinking involved in Blood Bowl, isn't there? When when the pressure's on, that's the thing. Absolutely. I think, I think that I think at low team value, this kind of high pressure game is is obviously gives you the most rewards, um, but is is the riskiest play. And, and with a perfect defense, that really let me let me go for this style. I would have played off and tried to stall out, you know, a nil nil probably, um, had it not been for the perfect defense. Well, maybe not start a nil-nil, but, you know, played a lot more conservatively. The perfect defence definitely encouraged me to go all out. Just gets the push, but he is he is stranded on a black orc, and it does free up another player. Oh boy, the ball's not going to be safe. That was my number one team rule. <laughs> yeah, keeping the ball safe. Actually, the name of the team. Dodge saving the catcher there again. Fantastic. This catcher could come in for an assist on the on the ball, carry a hit here. Yeah. Possibly. So fast. They're so fast, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got two options. I got one is the lineman comes across and. Screen, it's probably going to be the safest. Now, my tackle zone's a little weak in the center, in that everything in the center is going to get blocked down, and it's not a proper screen. Uh, I, I could always retreat. In fact, that might even be the better option. Mm. But no, oh, it's not safe, and I'm really running out of time. Oh, <laughs> didn't look at the clock. Oh, no, neither did I. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, Panic. It's a shame that we can't. We uh, like four minutes is the turn limit in tabletop blood bowl. It is an optional rule to have a four minute timer because the, due to the fact we're playing on blood bowl two, there is no option to disable the timer, unfortunately. But he has he has made the eye cage here. Now this is this is a valid formation. Um, basically, I can't get an assist. There's no way for me to possibly get an assist on the on the ball here. But obviously, it's it's kind of easy to get a one dice on the ball from in this position. But there's absolutely no way, really, for me to get a two dice on the ball. Yeah, so I mean, that was my dilemma. I was looking around, thinking, where two dice on, you know, a three plus, and there just wasn't <laughs> anywhere, just due to the heavy base contact. Yeah. So now, what and, I'm going to try know, to do is, sorry, sorry, Flash Bandit, to cut you off. I, I know this is tough, but I've got a f I've got four minutes as well. So, <laughs> 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 right, the, what I'm going to try to do here is engineer a one dice blitz with a blitzer, and um, that just gives me so so much better chance of a knockdown. Um, so it means that the players before it are going to be a little riskier. Um, 
not with this one though. This one's first, you know, 3-3. Three, three. I've got an assist. This guy is the one who I want to get in for the hit. But to do that, it's, oh, it's not even going to happen now, is it? It's actually just not even going to happen. Um, we'll see anyway. Right. I can make a two dice block here. Get a pow. That, that could be crucial. Because now, that lets me move this guy around. So that's the thing. It's about making blocks that do something, you know. I really needed the pow there. You've got to plan on getting pushes on your blocks, really. Because that's obviously much more likely that you will just not fail rather than succeed. <laughs> um, now I've got a route through here, don't I? I can, um, I could come here and one dice here. So, if I make a block here, I could cancel the assist. I could make a block there, but if I get a push, then I don't get to hit the ball at all. So again, I think I need to one dice the ball without block. As horrible as that is. I don't know. I, I like the failure state better in that you've got orcs on the ground. And so let's let's we compare both plays. Um uh, mm. the one with you bring in the catcher and the eight linemen to cancel the assist thrower gets a two on a push. Uh you know, you've still got your blitzer to maneuver and make a screen and you're not really in a bad spot. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, the one die for a skull, I've then got, you know, potentially a bunch of orcs that will then be free. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good but point. Let's go for this then. Up. Committed to tying them up, I think tying them up is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. Flashbinder makes. So let's move the catcher in here, so he's occupying two players. Now this is two dice, and if it's a power, it's a great payoff. If it's a push, then um, I just modify my plan slightly. It is. It is the great payoff has happened. So now, because it's a pow, the blitzer can go one, two, three, four, and hit from this angle, which is a better angle to hit from, in my opinion. But to do that, I need to then get this guy in here, which is also great, isn't it? I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Extra pressure on the ball, for sure. Yep. This offense in tatters. <laughs> yep. And let's go for the one dicer. Now only a one is a skull. Only a skull. Only a one in six is a failure. Um. I guess I keep the push again. I guess I have to. I don't wanna I don't wanna re-roll. Even though it's a fifty percent to knock the ball loose. I just don't wanna skull, do I? That's that's the key thing here. I don't wanna skull. Um these guys are fine. The bad thing about Blood Bowl 2 is I only had fifteen seconds to think about whether I wanted to re-roll that. I should have burnt the time thinking about whether I was gonna re-roll it before I made the blitz. Um so, yeah, I think that was the right play to make the push there. This obviously gives Fash some some place to free him up somehow, but it's hard, isn't it? I mean, basically, it's not going to be safe. <laughs> no, no, because I've I've these players are screening his whole team from where the ball is. So he's got four players, and I've got six players, you know, around here, and it's it's not going to be easy at all. Two players, that three. Yeah, this is the benefit down. of the the value state. Like even yeah. on the push, sure, you wouldn't have got those two through, but they would have been able to still move. Yeah, I would have been I would have been able to blitz him with block and then put pressure on still. So yeah, I think that was definitely the right play was to go for that. Um Oh yeah, so the eye cage yeah is a bit different if there's guard involved, but then there could oh, yeah. be guard and you could have a strength four carrier and if they've only got one guard then it's still a great cage. You could also use the eye cage with two guard players of your own, which it also makes it great. So but I do like the eye cage sometimes. It, it it, as bad as it seems, it's actually better than giving a two dice. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Magic Sea Dog saying, "You know, guys, not showing how fouls work. There just hasn't been a chance <laughs> for anybody to foul. Basically, fouls are super risky, and the sort of thing you, that really you don't want to do in low TV games anyway. Fouling is something you should do when somebody has, you know, Griff Overwald, you know, uh, or you know, and then you foul Griff Overwald with th then." Then you're risking your 50,000 player to deal with a 320,000 player. At low TV, the odds are very rarely going to be in your favour, and it's it's very rarely going to be a good tactical decision to foul. Um, there was a chance where Fashbinder could have done on the last turn of the first half. If I hadn't injured a player, then he would have fouled definitely, because it would have been crazy for him not to have done. Yeah, definitely. Oh boy, sad times in Fashtown. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, my plan for this is to just to regroup my orc team. They are radically split. Uh, the ball's never going to be safe while they're in this formation. I do have some two die blocks, but yeah, now just really having them free and moving will be the way. I think. Yeah. Yep, it's very, very tricky for the orcs at the moment. So I should make a blocking I should make a blocking video should now I explain assists and everything and a dodging video that uh, that um, that explains tackle zones and everything that seems like something worth doing <sighs> you haven't rolled a single one of these just quietly <laughs> yeah that's true. oh I'm so done I, I can't not I'm so done if I if I lose the ball there yeah, it gets the power though. Whew. Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, I did give up a lot of blocks by committing to this perfect defense, but it's paid off with two one in nine rolls in in three turns. And now with only one re-roll, everything's getting a bit dodgy. Even if he can protect the ball. No, oh, it's just so dodgy. <laughs> now I'm the top catcher gets now. Damn. Yep. <laughs> That was a good turn. You know, if a successful block manages to get a removal, I'll be pretty pleased. Yeah. Right, so there's a, I often talk about uh, bad one dice blocks, and even in this instance, there's bad two die blocks. So if we look at my number two black orc on the right hand side, uh, it's a two dice block on the number 10 lineman, Duke Ulfman. Yeah. However, if I want to nine it, that lineman comes down and harasses my thrower uh, after getting blocked free. Uh, yeah. Similarly with my number one black orc, if I wanted nine the block on the number 11 lineman, uh, it frees up the thrower, catcher, and the lineman potentially uh, yeah. to come down, mess up my screen. And I'm just considering not taking these two die blocks simply because I've got no reroll and the failure state is just so bad. Yeah. Uh, whereas currently he's you know at least tying one up and taking a square and moving away from a couple of people. Providing a screen to somewhat stop some assists uh, on my downfield players. But it's just not good. Of the two, I think the one on the right is the least shit. So I'll grade that one and pay the price. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely standard. Standard standard dice rolls there. Exactly what you expect from Blood Bowl. Yeah, and look, some people will say, oh, Fash, you are so unlucky. <laughs> a little higher than average one in nines compared to my opponent, but that it's the choice that I made to make that block when I know that I could have not made that block and maybe been in a better spot. So when you're making your one dies, think, all right, how boned will I be if this fails? And if it is very boned, then don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right, so, I mean, it's kind of tempting to um, now bring in an assist here, block him, and then get a player onto there. And then I'm, I, want to, I want to make the action more in your backfield, obviously. Um, I don't see an obvious play where I blitz here. I mean, I could blitz the ball. I could um, I could dodge all the way around like this, and um, and then go for a one dice with a catcher. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, but I'd, I'd, I actually don't see a good blitz to be honest, because these guys, I would have to make a one dice with block and then blitz with him to get something around there, which wouldn't be bad, would it? But it wouldn't really be that good either. There's nothing that there's nothing that screams good play to me here. So um, so credit to Fash for that, I guess. 
Yeah, look, it's the best I could do in considering the situation and consider. I think I'd blitz this Black Hawk, actually. And then just just make two Ds, you know, to, to collapse to collapse the overall position more. I Absolutely. If there's not a good block that, you know, on, on the ball that's, you know, relatively safe with very little dice, yeah, you are better off just making two die blocks, downing your opponent's uh, team and looking for next turn to make that uh, blitz on the carrier. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I do my safe moves. I want to make two, two dice blocks here, two dice block here, two dice block here. So I've got to deal with this guy somehow. If I blitz him and push him to there... I can still assist, so let's go for a blitz here with this guy. Blitzing somebody I could have blocked isn't obviously ideal, but he is strength four, um, so it's not an ideal situation, is it? <laughs> Essentially. So now he gets to move here to assist these two 2Ds. He gets to go here to assist this 2D. Um, and I've got this one. So I've got to do this 2D first. Because if I get a push here, which I've got to expect, it cancels my assist. Which isn't great positioning, I guess. Get the pow, and I can't follow, even though I'd love to, because this Black Orc's here and I don't want to get punched, and I also want an another assist. But if I get a pow here, this is going to be amazing, because I'll be basing two down guys. And I don't. I guess I want to keep him locked up. No, no, I, I, I want to push, don't I? No, but then if I... So this is the thing, if I push, he gets to just stand up and two dice me down. So I think I do want to take the both down here. If I pushed him, I either don't follow, or I follow and just give up an easy two dice block. So, yeah, I think that was the right play there, maybe. Just to push. Sounds like a baby in the background or something there, Flash Finder. Uh, I can't hear anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's a there's a party next door. Sorry, I got the headphones on. All uh, right, no problem. Nah, yeah. it's a drunk woman laughing it's like a, I. It's a it's a drunk girl screaming rather rather than a baby. I'm I'm not touching her. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> right, so there you go. I think that's the first armor break of the half. <laughs> and I think it's the first one in nine as well. Yeah. <laughs> Just quietly. Yeah, but it's it's also the first armor break of the whole half, despite me giving up infinite blocks and armor eight yeah. and and barely being able to block the armor nine i think that's the first the first armor break of the entire half all right well yeah they're awfully loud now that i now that i took the headphone off <laughs> holy shit <laughs> I'll close the door, but I'll uh, I'll melt. I'll tell you what we'll do. <laughs> Done. Window closed. Okay, thank you. It becomes infinitely more hot in the room there. Sorry. At least there's right, only so, uh, at least there's only four more yeah. five more turns. Uh throw can block and on a power gets an assist on the blitzer. Uh, Black Hawk comes in, cancels some assists. Uh, blitzer makes some blocks, Lyman's then free to strain the thrower. Doesn't really make you know safe progression. Uh, other option is doing risky stuff. Like Jim's play to get in the position he did in the first half was a bit risky, and you know human four plus three pluses even with rerolls. Yep, that's true. Uh, so I I could think about you know dodge with a blitzer. Uh, Black hole gets an assist three dice as the thrower and makes a uh, a sideline cage downfield. I do get met by the number two blitzer then the next turn, uh, but the rest of the team would be somewhat outmaneuvered. Yeah. Then we're talking, you know, three pluses with to dodge and then three pluses to catch and then the all thrower doing a four with a reroll. And that's just yeah. so gross and it's turned twelve. And I don't think we're quite at that state yet. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, I think you had a very nice turn last turn, which which forced me into a more conservative turn, didn't it? Um but now it's still it it just hasn't lost you the game rather than put you in a in a winning state. Exactly. All right. I think I might look and see if this block's successful, and if it is, I might even think about reforming up the center. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Well. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> just one time. Yeah. That was pretty brutal. I mean, you have rolled. Yeah, you probably haven't made 27 blocks this half. 
and you've made <laughs> but it means the price paid yeah. and, it's, and usually it's the price paid for all mining to get those sorts of roles is some removals it just doesn't happen there look and yeah. it's not to be unexpected, really. Exactly. Look, no, nothing's crazy in Blood Bowl, you know. People people say they expect to get three guys sent off if they foul nine times and stuff like this. <laughs> you, you can't expect anything like that. You know, may, let's say maybe Fash has made 15 blocks. It's easy for him to roll three 1 in 27s out of 15 blocks. That's not that's not crazy. But also, it's also not crazy for him to remove three players and made no 1 in 9s. So, it's like... There is a lot of variance, and it's um, and while obviously you feel very unlucky, Fash is obviously feeling very unlucky. I right feel now. very unlucky. Yeah. I feel very unlucky right now. Yeah, do not he... believe how much unluckiness there is. <laughs> yeah, and obviously he has been objectively unlucky, but it's not unlikely to be as unlucky as Fash has been, and nor is it unlikely to have, you know, for me to have been absolutely hammered. I could have been hammered this half. I could have just had... should have been hammered. Gosh, <laughs> hate this game. <laughs> I could have easily been down to two players like I was in the first half at this stage. Gotcha, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, this is this is pretty tricky. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be some good feedback after this, um, after this video, and then if if people want like you know specific things like dodging videos, blocking videos, fouling videos, I can do them. But um, yeah, there's a good chance of getting sent off if you foul. No, Fash hasn't had a stun this half. No, there's been one stun in the entire half, and it was me stunning this orc. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Wow. Yeah. So look at. Uh... Plenty of blocks to free a, a blitzer onto the ball. Yeah. So I want to make this block so here and pow Hopefully him. you just make pushes. Yeah, I mean, th this one is huge. This one here for a pow. A pow here would be absolutely massive. I definitely want to stand this guy up and can cancel this assist and also base a down player. I want to do that for sure. And I want to stand this guy up first as well. Definitely for sure. This is huge. This one here. If this is a pow, it's a one dicer. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, so now it's interesting. I could block this guy. Yeah, I think this is the best way, isn't it? I block this guy first and hope for a pow. Got him. A push would have, a push would have let me move this guy in and then make a follow-up block. So there, there was chances. This would have really like the to be a pow as well. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so despite the pawns from Fashbinder here, I did get pretty lucky there. Obviously, I just move in this lineman here now for the assist. And now this is where I do commit a reroll on the ball carrier hit because I've got two dice. 75% to put him down. Absolutely have to reroll this if it's not a knock knockdown, and it is. Okay, so the ball's in, in, in a tackle zone. There's no real recovery on. But again, obviously, Fash is um, in a bit of a state, isn't he? Um... I think I have to keep the thrower here to base two two down characters. That seems that seems a fine use of his body. I don't want to make another dodge or anything. Um, and similarly here, this is okay. I mean, I can. I, I think I will reroll it if I want in nine, but or I could block this guy out. So this is this is what I've got to choose here, haven't I? I can um I can bring in my catcher here, and I can either two dice him or two dice him. Hmm, interesting. I think the catch is okay tagging this lineman here. But I would like more players around the ball, wouldn't I? I've already got four tackle zones on the ball. Um, yeah, well, here in this instance, you know that I'm going to go for the scatter. Who is the easiest scatter? Sure, the Black Hawk does. Without a reroll, it's scary. And you know they're only looking for a block with block, which I currently have. Yeah, so yeah, th this is... Yeah, yeah, I mean... Uh -huh. Whew! As I do one in That's nine. That's of the game. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable, Jeff. So now he can two, he can two D him and then stand him up and move him. But he's tack, he's in a tackle zone, so it's okay. Um, I could bring this guy around and go here. 
or something. Um, I think it's worth tagging the lineman. I think it is. I don't know, though. I think it's worth him tagging him, definitely. I mean, this is very tricky for Fash, isn't it, here? I don't even know what he does, to be honest. So, uh, hoping for a lucky scatter. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, so I think on that basis, yeah, that, that's looking like his best move is a one dice here, isn't it, to get a, to get a push. That's basically... I don't know about one dice. What kind of madman does one dices? It's hard, for him, to, that's for sure. it's hard for him to make a two dice, isn't it, though? I mean, Actually, making two dice is straight up. There's no doubt about it. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. So if you, I guess I guess if I move, then you block here, and then you can make a two dice. So I would just like my catch-up being nearer the end zone. But I guess I've got one near the end zone anyway. Catch's advantage is he's a sweeper, too. Yeah, true. In case I could do some sort of cheeky old passing play without a reroll. <laughs> yeah. I'll move him here, and then and then this this lineman really can't affect the play. And I can always dodge away from him next turn if I want, because I do have dodge. All right. <laughs> ready for some magic? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for the magic. Oh, oh he gets the power. power. Gets the power. I mean, I had to leave him base, didn't I? I mean, to the point where Flashbinder's yeah. used his. You got the blitz. Yeah. Blitz there, yeah. Dictating where your opponent blitzes is good. Yeah, so that's how we got the two dice. Yeah, fair enough. All two dices all the time with Flash. Oh. oh, no. No. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Making this two is all like not making the two uh, for the for the Black Hawk. Mm. Uh, risky ones don't really do anything. The throw is now not coming to recover as it was a scatter that was pretty far away. Have to get the thrower off the ball though. And we do have a little, a little human sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Yep, there is a little human, a little human sandwich. All right, it's just not one in nine, it, and I'll be pretty pleased. <laughs> Famous Let's last do this one. one in nine here first. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, that was a good call to make an irrelevant block over there, rather than fail this one. I mean, because this is the thing: if you make I mean, this block and you do one in nine, it, it's you double tail there and it's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah straight up. Yeah. So obviously, I want to make two dice blocks. Um, I could make this two dice block and then this two dice block and this two dice block. Um. Or I could bring in an assist here and make a two dice block, two dice block, and then get more players around. And I think that's what I want to do. So let's bring in this. I guy. think we should further highlight not making the block with the number one black orc without a reroll. Just, yeah. just further highlight how bad the failure state was. Yes, yeah. And, so and if, not making the, the the block was absolutely. Yeah, this is level. something you'll find with with um, rookies with lizard men. They'll they'll take every block available to them, mm -hmm. and then they'll use up their rerolls very quickly, and then find themselves out of rerolls, or they'll block without a reroll here. And yeah, if, if Fash double skulls this, it is literally game over, basically. Um, so that yeah, that was a huge failure state. Quite quite correct. It's just yeah. such a shame that it, they all came so early, the two die block fails in yeah. the turn, and that I didn't have the option to not reroll them, really. Yeah, that's true. Wow. The second armor break of the half is an is a, is a AV9 or getting KO'd. Unbelievable, Jeff. Right, so now... The reason I don't follow up there is so that um, we can make another two dice here. We can come here, and so that so this would have been a one dice because I had an assist, but he had an assist, so I moved my guy here so that the Black Hawk is in his tackle zone, so he can't assist. And although I would love to just make the recovery with the thrower um, for the sure hands. It's more important to knock players down and um, just generally dominate the match, isn't it? Now I can blitz with block. The push is good, clears the tackle zone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm away. Um, the question is about the thrower. Do I move him up first? And um, I guess I do. I can just move here, can't I? I could blitz one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm pretty safe then. Pretty much home and dry. If I am, um, well, not really. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI. Mm. 
I think I do move him first, though. Do I, though? I could move him in here or something, couldn't I? Could move him in here. In case I fail the pickup. Or I could just blitz first and then the push goes to here. I think I just blitz and then I'll, I'll use the reroll on the pickup. So he's actually just the same as picking it up as a thrower. I could make this. Might as well dodge. Well, uh, well, could even dodge with the thrower. So the blitzer blitzes and then the blitzer post blitz screens out the two linemen that the thrower is oh, yeah. marking. Yeah, Throw in and dodges to pick it up. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not going to dodge to pick up, but um, I could dodge at the end. I, I'm I, I'm happy using a reroll to make the pickup. And I'd much rather have the ball on a blitzer with block. I can make this block afterwards, Fair but enough. obviously if I don't want to use the one in nine up here. And here I can free this guy up as well with a block potentially. So there's lots of you good things. You don't roll one in nines. There's lots of things that can happen. And I'm gonna go for the pickup with a reroll. I don't mind committing a reroll to pick it up. To be honest. Alright, get banged on. <laughs> Pretty bang gone. <laughs> right, I think I'm just going to go here for now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so this guy can make a crazy move here to completely close out the, sc the screen. So, um, oh, this guy can as well. Oh, man. I think I have Spoiled to. Just, choice. I think I have to go for the safe move first. Um, so that's a bit difficult for Fash. Let's make this block now. I don't roll one in nines, as Fash correctly pointed out. <laughs> um, now, I could make this block with it from this angle, but then if a push wouldn't free my player. So even though it's going to end up freeing a Black Orc now, who cares? He's movement four. He's out of the game, basically. I'll do this one. Get the push that I needed. Will follow, and that frees this guy up to go and base these two. So now I can, in fact, go for the dodge here to make the ball safe. Yep. Don't fail anything. So, wow. <laughs> so coming here, he'd, he'd have to double GFI just to mark me. He can't blitz. Um, and then coming through here, he'd have to make crazy dodges. Like, it's not an X cage, but it's good enough, you know? This is the thing. You, this is a screen when you've got two players here. He's got to make dodges of some kind of crazy variety to get in and do anything. So... Looks pretty safe, man. Yeah, look, five plus if I want it, really. Yeah, five plus, yeah. That's looking the best option. Hmm. It's turn 14 as well. Yep. There's... So we really pressed for time. You scoring now doesn't, like, even there's no real state. Uh, yeah. Isn't realistically going to have me scoring in, in two, even if you do score on your 14. The farm's a bit rubbish. I mean, other options could be, you know, blitzing down the catcher and just trying to get in front, but you've just got such a uh, a good position. And so the thing that Jim maybe hasn't pointed out, but he sort of has, is that marking the downed players, uh, some people criticize it, but in this instance, it's really preventing any sort of movement. And so, you know, up one, I've got no reroll. There's no reason to allow me to move and have people free. Like, yeah. People think that blocks are to get removals, and yes, they are, but the real strength in making a successful block is your opponent on the ground. That, that's the real power. That's the absolute best thing in that they stand up and do nothing. Yeah, yeah you're basically locking, and, uh, them, locking them down because although, although they're agility three, I mean, you're taking three points of movement off them straight away anyway, even if they do try to run away. But then it's a three plus for almost every player on Fashbinders on the Orc team. It'd be a four plus for the black orc to try and dodge, but um, all the humans dodging a three plus, and and a three plus is risky, especially without a reroll. But even with a reroll, a three plus is risky, um. So it basically locks them down, and you know, obviously d elves and stuff, you know, their agility four, they would dodge away in a two plus, but um, it's still limiting them greatly, isn't it? And and they're just making people roll more dice. You want to make you want to roll as few dice as you have to, and you want to make your opponent roll as many dice as you can because they're going to fail at some point. Whew, what do you reckon about the, uh, the janky dodge? The janky dodge? I think it's pretty horrible because you'd be in for a minus two anyway, wouldn't you? So you'd have to 
You'd have to make a dodge. Uh, yeah, dodge double GFI to. You'd have so, to. Oh, sorry, just a dodge. Yeah, a dodge it. a dodge to mark this lineman, and then a five plus dodge in for a one dice. I mean, are you going to get anything better than that? Is yeah, so it doesn't not... look like it. Eh? Well, I mean, the the other option is you know one D on the lineman. So this is the catcher, and then he just gets blocked away. Yeah, that's the thing. There's there's times where you've got to make suboptimal plays because optimal plays ain't going to cut it. Like when I had to do the pass in the first half, you know. Um, mm. the, the game's going to. The, there's times where the game's. You think the game's going to slip away if you don't do something. Then you do it, you fail, and then the game is gone. You know, so yeah. so that that's a key skill is knowing when 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 the point comes where if you don't make a move right now, you will lose. Because I have made that, that that call too early sometimes and lost because of it, and then sometimes you make that call too late and lose because of it. Yeah. So look, the, your scoring play is the one in nine hand, one thirty six GFI. Um. And look, if I were you, I wouldn't be hesitant in the score. Uh, the Orkin two, wow. not realistic. Really? We did discuss the, we you know well, we we did the uh, discuss the pre stalling on the previous half, in which you were regretting it. So I think you might even just run it in, just to be certain, you know, points on the board. And so I think, uh, I think this is in fact the pseudo turn sixteen. Yeah. And even if I didn't, and I just block people down, there's no way that you're not making two die blocks to clear me and still screening in the corner. Yeah. I think this is truly the last, uh, the last it's a ditch effort. Yeah. So we will look for the janky uh, dodge to cancel and into blitz. Oh yeah. boy! Oh, oh, oh. Halfway there. So this is a five. Living plus dodge. on a prayer. <laughs> so it's a thirty-three percent five plus dodge because he's make he's got the dodge because he's leaving he's leaving this tackle zone square, moving into this one with two dice. So it's a five plus dodge fails it, and now. We don't obviously. We, obviously, we don't score now because we've got so many players that can screen. Um, so, I don't need to make it a proper. Oh God, I could just. So I always, I always do that first. I always just move the ball carrier first and then think about stuff. Um, I could even surf this. No, I couldn't really surf him. No. I want to blitz him, don't I? And block him. So, let's get catches here to make a screen so this is going to have to be a 4 plus 5 plus to one dice him or a 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 GFIs or something outrageous I'll obviously re-roll it if it's a 1 in 9 um, on the block it wasn't a 1 in 9 so then because I've, I've got the movement left, I'm gonna I'm gonna move him here. I don't really know why. Um, <laughs> I don't know why either. But that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it means that I do get a two dice in the game here. Yeah. Um, but I could have done that if he was there. Wow. Maybe I should have re-rolled that. He's he's almost got a chance now. One, two, three, four, five, six. An eight, eight, eight. Over a no chance. Yeah, not great. I'm going maybe it's a bit too quick now. Now that I feel, now that I've got the um, no, from from this point you win 99, doesn't? It? Yeah, exactly. Because it's like because it is such a dominant position, it's kind of easy to play bad when you're in a dominant position. It's easy to go quick now. You know, cause yeah, I'm exactly. a little bit, little bit excited. I can make dodges here and not care if they fail. Um, just make things. I think just putting harder. three men in front of the blitzer could have been enough. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, but I mean, the chance of me being able to score is still absolutely massive, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So, so may maybe I played that turn very carelessly, too fast. Um. I just I don't know I just got rush of blood rush of blood because I was going to score basically and and that and that is something that people have isn't it you know it's um it's certainly very very rarely is someone just going to play you know mechanically um for the whole match I would have thought about bringing another player in here so that you could have chained him forward one yeah that was the plan so this this block on a power has the blitzer stand uh, in this square uh, 
and that has the thrower blitz on uh, your blitzer to get a push on my blitzer to get my blitzer one square down. Yeah, so maybe if you'd move that guy, block that off, it would have saved you a GFI or something. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it would have saved you a GFI if you'd move that thrower in first, but I mean, it's, it's neither here nor there. I'm not criticizing you. But, uh, <laughs> it would have been. It would have been. Well, I was looking idea. for the chain to be a two die rather than a one die. Yeah. I guess we'll make the one. We'll <laughs> attempt the one D. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is easy to get excited, though, isn't it? When like when things, when things are going well or whatever, and you think you've, you're in a good spot and stuff like that. You know, we're not professional sportsmen, and professional sportsmen get nervous and stuff, don't they? And like, in big situations, so. Um yep. So that's a nice. A nice tricky little move from Fash to get that to get that chain push. It doesn't do anything there. No, not a lot, to be honest. <laughs> does get the does get the blitzer in though, so he can go, you know, two GFIs to put. At least, uh, at least he has you to roll a dice as opposed to no dice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now there's a one in twelve nine six chance of me not winning, um, but it's actually it's actually less than that because if I've got them both down. Um, it's a bit dodgy, isn't it? So, this is a pretty big GFI, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because As if I'm going to make GFIs. <laughs> because, I, you know, now I can blitz with a catcher and re-roll the both down. Um, I guess I would have had to re-roll the both down anyway with a blitzer. But the good thing is... Yeah, if I, could, if I could tag the two catchers, that would have been a bit more interesting. Yeah. So let's do the safe moves first, just just in case you never know. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's there's two ways I can approach it, isn't there? I can just because I've got to think about the failure state. That's that's as Fash always as always points out, which is good. Um. Yeah, you know, I could if I blitz with a catcher, then there's a one in eighty one chance of me ending on my ass. But at least I've still got my blitzer standing up only really being able to be one diced. If I blitz with my blitzer and then try to score after it, um, there's a 1 in 81 chance of being in contact with him afterwards. Well, I don't know, there's a 1 in 9 of being in contact and then do I use my reroll to dodge out or do I reroll the hit hoping to not get a 1 in 9 and then if I do reroll it and I'm still left in contact with him, what do I do then? Do I still go for the dodge? So I think I am going to go for the blitz with a, th with a catcher. There you go. Get the power anyway. And now I'm I'm clearly just gonna score now. Um there's no need to you know, no need to risk it. Um even without rerolls he could make a four plus four plus whatever. No matter how I try to defend it, he's he's pr almost certainly not gonna score in one turn without rerolls. Having <laughs> <laughs> for a riot. Yeah, there's there could be a riot. So I mean that that is that is some. There is something to be said for the kickoff event riot because it does give people always a bit of a chance, doesn't it? Yeah, but um, I don't deserve that chance. Yeah, the game's in the bag. It shouldn't. <laughs> that that's the way I look at it. I look at it that they don't deserve that chance, but um, it does give them a chance. So there's the you know the game is not dead yet. However, I'm not gonna. Uh, I can I can show you a, a, a so uh, I don't know. So I could either show you the anti one turn defense or I could just set up it in case of a riot. I think. This isn't the Just video to show. Right. Yeah, I don't think this is the video to show the anti one turn touchdown defense. I, Some might know. not be able to imagine Orcs doing exactly. chains to do things. Exactly. So I think it's best just to set up to stop the in case of a riot. So this is probably how I do the humans because you know may, maybe in fact the way for you to break this would be with a black orc blitz, wouldn't it? So if I put these here. Ah, but then you could blitz a blitz. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think have the blitzers at the side there. Um, but they're going to be too far away to maybe have the blitzers here. 
or the catchers here. Right. Here we go. So the blitzers are protected, ready to react to wherever the orcs go, if there's a riot. Um, the catchers are obviously weak, but there's nothing to be gained by knocking them down, really. And it is hard to knock them down unless you're hitting them with a blitzer. And these are just holding the line out. I guess sw swap these because there's even less payoff for blitzing the guy. There's no payoff at all for blitzing this guy in terms of scoring. Blitzing this guy is absolutely terrible. Blitzing this guy isn't bad. But blitzing this guy is absolutely absolutely worthless. I guess if I, I could have my catchers here, because then they would be able to react eight well, ten squares potentially. So maybe the catchers being there is the best. So yeah, worked out the best way to set up in a ziggurat here. But this is only if he gets the riot, basically. Uh, so somebody in chat said, why not one square deep as the Black Oaks would have to cheer fight the Blitz? Because the chances are they're going to break through the middle, because that's where their strength is. They could knock Gone these through three the middle. guys. They could knock these three guys down um, and Blitz one of him and then like go through the middle. Chances are they're going to try to break through the middle. If you go one square back, it becomes easier to break through the middle. Um, I think. I think. I think it would become easier to break through the middle if you were one square back. Uh. I could have even gone one square forward, actually, if anything, because the quick snap is no threat. Normally, the reason you set two squares back like this, in this setup and in the rule of five, is in case your opponent gets a quick snap event. But um, seeing as the quick snap was not an issue, maybe I should have gone one forward, if anything. I don't think you've broken my arm in this entire half. And another double score. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Let's imagine this was a league a league match, and um, I will make a blitz to try and get star player points on my um, on my blitzer. Um, which would maybe work, because a lot of Blood Bowl is about the progression aspect. So um, maybe this wasn't the best video for that in a way, because that, that defense, the perfect defense defense that I did was very risky. Maybe not something I would have done if I had players that I wanted to protect. But, it's, but then they are starting teams, so I probably would have played that way in the first game of the league, to be honest. But yeah, the, the tactics change with developed teams where you really want to hang on to your best players and stuff. And because it's turn 16, there's no repercussions whatsoever. So let's make a little dance and have a foul. No, no, me lineman. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. But um, yeah, there you go. That was... That was the match, and uh, there you go. I think I think that was pretty good. Um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to to post them in the comments and that. And uh, I will I will try and do more more videos explaining stuff like you know dodging and you know tackle zones and guards and assists and all, all this kind of stuff. There's there's a lot of I'm definitely going to make more videos just for YouTube. Um, but there you go. As you can see from this, I mean, Fash was desperately unlucky in terms of 65 blocks he made, and he only made five armor breaks. That is pretty outrageous. I made four armor breaks and only 53, but still, 53 is a lot of blocks. We did it we is. did have a big fight in the second half, didn't we? Massive fight for the ball with that perfect defense. Um, but I think that made it interesting, to be honest. I think without the perfect defense, the humans would have struggled on on defense probably. So that kind of that made it a bit bit more interesting. The three rolls guy on two dies, like that. I think that was the the toughest part. And none of the the uh, traditional post match, you go to ones and skulls and you point out how many times you one and nine compared to your opponent. Yeah. So we go, oh look, Jimmy here, zero double skulls, one one and nine. What a lucker. Yeah. Look, you know. But I mean, that, that's the sort of thing. I hope I hope during the match we were able to demonstrate. Uh, yeah. You know, not making a two die block where you had no re roll and the failure state was really bad. And I think that's the one thing that I see in, in call and open ladder uh, yeah. that people do, and they just do it willy-nilly, and I say, wow, I can't believe you just did that. And people in chat will pop up and say, oh, but it was a, you know, a one-dice block, or it was, it was a two-dice block, you know? Yeah. And they just don't seem to realize that just how bad making a two-dice block when you've got no re-roll, and exactly. yeah, you're, you're in a world of hurt is. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that's the exactly. biggest thing is, yeah. 
yeah, there's a lot to take away from it, and hopefully, hopefully we can do more videos in the future. Fashion, maybe go into like special. Yeah, absolutely. Hit, hit us up anytime. Excellent. Right. So, thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay and fast. stay fantastic.